Already day two, this is week number eight as the Ultimate RV Show National Tour continues. I'm Sean Parr from the nationally syndicated radio show across the country. I got the Jurgies, I got the Flippin' Tilbies here. It's family week again. And of course, we're taking you uh, inside some of the most amazing vehicles. Over 80,000 factory fresh RVs as the Ultimate RV Show continues. And ladies, we have seen some incredible vehicles so far. And we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. We're going to do a first look to kick things off today. So so awesome. Super excited to have those first looks. Yeah. And also, we have so many things to give away. Yesterday, we did a lot. We gave away uh, the yes, UT250 out of giveaways. Coleman. And uh, how do we get registered to give away? To register, you guys have to text URVS to 46642 because we are doing giveaways all the rest of the weekend. And then there's still two more weeks left. We're doing a RV every single weekend as well. Tomorrow. So you have to register. Yeah, got to get registered. And guys, I'll tell you what, uh, Bryce, you were talking about the must-haves yesterday. A lot of retail segments to get to as well. If you're new to RVing, if you're looking to get uh, dialed in for spring break or the spring season, it's RV season in just a few weeks as we uh, continue to come to you from the frozen tundra of Wichita. <laughs> it's true. And that's Very the thing. Cool. We want to break it down to you guys to help you think, okay, what are some things that I need to get as the camping and RV season gets into full effect here? So any questions you have during this entire show, just remember you can text any questions. Just text RV to 46642, and we got specialists ready to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, specialists. And Nelly, uh, we, we talk about that. If you see something in an RV that you say, you know what, I'd like to have the, can we get the bunkhouse with just two or whatever? Uh, we want to move the kitchen or we want a bigger sink. You can do that. You can do it. Anything. We've got, everything's handled. Everything is handled. All you got to do is text either, the, either of those codes, 246642, and they'll be helped out. Everybody's ready. Are you ready, Sean? Let's do it. All right, we're going to jump right into our very first look. This is the Ozark 1680 BSK. Let's take a look. The great thing about the Ultimate RV Show National Tour is sometimes we get lucky enough where the manufacturer will send a brand spanking new floor plan right to us. We didn't even know it was coming. Prototypes, they're like, you know it's a prototype, but we know you guys are going to love it, so we're going to send it to you. Welcome to the 2021 Forest River Ozark 1680 BSK. So brand new, I had to get the info card handed to me right before we cut the cameras on. Because since we got 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, we wanted to display one of these brand new ones to you as soon as it hit the floor. And this one literally just hit the floor. We pulled it into the bay, <laughs> rolled down the doors, and now you get to see it with me for the very first time here at the Ultimate RV Show. This is a brand new entry for the Forest River Ozark because they decided to give us a bunk model with a slide with the chaise lounge. Very good floor plan, very good layout when you're talking about something that's only 23 feet long, 4,050 pounds dry. And right now, during the Ultimate RV Show National Tour, this one's gonna start at $23,995 or as low as $5.93 a day. Okay. All right, for something brand spanking new, let's just go ahead and cut the price, get it out of here, I dig it. But with this one, you get camp comfort that the Forest River Ozark line is known for. And you're only gonna be able to get the Forest River Ozarks from Camping World and Gander RV and Outdoors. Let's start right back here in the back with double over double bunks on the campsite. I got sealed safety glass all the way around, dual windows up top, dual USB charging ports, and I like the decorative matting that we have here on my plush three inch thick mattress uh, because it matches the decor in the Forest River Ozarks. You'll see the light on the dark patterns here in just a minute. Down below, another double bunk with dual USB charging, a little light there, and some finished off storage underneath. Now, with the Forest River Ozarks, we do have this beautiful herringbone pattern that flows from the floor all the way up into the shower in the bathroom. Slip resistant, easy to clean linoleum that just makes life a whole lot better, especially when you're camping. You come back, maybe your shoes are a little bit wet and you're a little bit dirty. It's easy to clean up and it's slip resistant. You can really feel the rugged feel on this. Their decor is light on dark. You got the graphite black fixtures matched with the beautiful light interiors all over this camper. Really aesthetically pleasing and just makes this, you know, the camping experience a little bit more enjoyable. We step into the off campsite bathroom. I got my corner mounted single basin sink here for my vanity, mirrored medicine cabinet with storage and the raised lips. I'm a fan of this because when you are traveling in your RV, when you put stuff in here, a lot of times when you're 
when you set up, you go to open the door, if you don't have those raised lips, everything that's in there falls out on you. So just another little nice security feature that's added. The, the matte black or graphite style fixtures all the way around this RV, light on dark, appealing, and it's what people wanted. When they surveyed and asked people, hey, what do you want inside your RV? They wanted the interiors to be lighter with some darker accents. Now, I got my plastic bowl right here with the foot flush, not cramped anywhere that I go. Got some more storage right here. Got the 36 inch single surround shower here with my shower curtain, the herringbone pattern, like I mentioned on the floor, follows me up through here. Good spot that if you do want to bring uh, the, the family with you, I mean, you got double over double bunks, got the chaise lounge, plus you got a Murphy jackknife in there. So this one will easily sleep, let's say three, five people or more. Uh, if you got the kids, you're looking at seven easily with the bunks and weighing in at roughly 4,000 pounds dry and only 23 feet long, 78 inch high ceilings. That's a very nice offering by Forest River and it's a single axle RV. So, I mean, you got a 13.5 BTU furnace or 13.5 BTU AC, a 20,000 BTU furnace uh, and insulation that will do a good job of keeping that three season camping going all through the three seasons. Another upgraded feature for this year, Look, so new, the travel tape is still on it. 10.7 cubic foot Everchill 12 volt fridge freezer combo. These are great because they are 12 volt, they are frost resistant on the front too. And since they're 12 volt, you can keep it running down the road, but a lot of the manufacturers could not get access to the gas electric fridges during the pandemic. So uh, they went with the 12 volt fridges because they had to make RVs, they had to get them out. People have realized that it's the safest way to see America is in your RV. So they had to start making them to get them out. So you get an upgraded fridge without having to pay the upgraded price. Right here, versatility. Forest River's known for it too. Everything from the armrests that are removable to the chaise lounge sofa slash jackknife, because this part over here is a jackknife. You got the storage shelf, the large panoramic window in an extra deep slide with the wood balance, good height, good clearance, solid construction, and versatility when it comes to sitting down and reconnecting with the loved ones or enjoying those camp cooked meals. You could fit three people here easily because I got a seat right here, got my two right there, the table turns, and it's just on this bar underneath. So when I'm ready to move the table, just remove the bar, I can put it in the storage. This kicks out into my sofa sleeper, and I got my chaise lounge here, giving me some a little, a little additional sleep. Now we always say that the, um, uh, the jackknife sofas sleep one, one person, but with this, I mean, my wife and I have slept on them before. So if you're comfortable getting snuggled in, uh, then you can fit two people because this one will do seven people comfortably, five extremely comfortably, especially if they're adults. But if you got kids, you got options. If you want to sit here like this, bring my armrest over here, use it as a pillow, whatever. Take a look at what I have for my entertainment space. Now, my TV backer and everything is right over here, uh, right in front of the bathroom on the off camp side. I got my satellite and cable connections as well as my 110 power. We are pre-wired for 4G and LTE extension. So if you want to sit, watch TV, you want to kick back on the chaise lounge, just kind of chill a little bit, you got those options. Um, it's nice to see that the manufacturers have started incorporating a little bit more comfort into the designs of their RVs. And Forest River with the 1680 BSK did a good job of thinking about that. They gave you a bunk, they gave you a slide, and they gave it to you in the Ozark package, which means large RV features stuffed into a small, lightweight RV. You get things like the 13.5 BTU air conditioner, the 20,000 BTU furnace, all for as little as $5.93 a day, starting at $23,995. Now, since this is a smaller RV, 23 feet long, roughly 4,050 pounds. With the, when it comes over to the camp kitchen, you'll see you still have good countertop prep space, but you only got the two burner cooktop on this one. If you need a little more additional prep space, that folds down, it's flush mounted. You got the extra cutting space there. High output burner on the front, LED flashlight there, and plenty of storage all the way around this RV. Solid wood construction, full extension on the ball bearing drives. Got storage underneath. 
And I have storage up top with a frosted glass inlay here, flush mounted microwave, 78 inches of height in here with the clearance. And check out my little bed that I have up here in the front. Well, let's look at the storage first. So you got a shelf up there for some additional room, ward storage over here. And with the single axles, uh, you get the Boss audio systems. This is, this is awesome because the tube does a good job of giving you some good sound. It's Bluetooth, you got the AM FM on there, it's waterproof. You can hang it in here, you can take it outside as your entertainment. Or if you're an adventurous couple, you're an adventurous family, you like to get out and about, you can throw that in your backpack, take it hiking, take it biking, fishing. I mean, it's so many options that when you have the dual zone entertainment, like a lot of RVs have, you're kind of limited. If you want to go somewhere, you can't take that entertainment with you. So having the Boss Audio Systems, or like to call it the tube or the pill, you have that option right there. Now, reconnection spot. Let's say you look at this beauty, since it is only 23 feet long, 4,000 pounds, starting at, look at this, so new, I got to get the car, 23,995, or as low as $5.93 a day. Follow me down the rabbit hole on this one. You and your loved one, your spouse, your friend, your family, whatever, maybe it's the guy's hunting trip, the ladies' wine weekend, where you want to go on that wine tour. You need something that you can tow with your SUV or your light duty truck. At 4,050 pounds dry, this is easily towable by an SUV, which is what they also wanted to do with the Ozarks. They wanted to make it so you could tow it with an SUV. But you have room to sleep seven, you got room to reconnect and entertain with your loved ones. Large panoramic windows. Got one over there on the campsite over my sink. The large one over here in the slide right above my sofa and right here. So follow me down the rabbit hole. Let's say I am with my loved one and we decided that we want to go to the mountains. We want to go to a football game, we want to go tailgate, we want to go whatever. When you're in your RV, you don't have to worry about setting up travel arrangements, buying, buying plane tickets, buying hotel, because we don't know who's been in that hotel room before we get in there. But when we have our RV, we're in our RV, our safety, our security. So picture you sitting here on this plush micro material that is removable, these, these do remove, you can use them as the pillows over there on the lounge, the pillows on the bunks. This, you know, kicks off. You can make this the sleeper if you wanted to, but you do have the Murphy bed, which I'm going to show you how easy that is here in a minute. But you're watching the sunrise, or you're watching the sunset, and you're connecting and you're making memories. 2021 is going to be the year of RV travel, and manufacturers have figured out that after what happened last year and we weren't, a, we weren't able to get out and do what we wanted to do and feel the freedom and feel the open road like we wanted to, reconnect with the loved ones, go see the places that we wanted to see. They started redesigning and recreating models that would make availability to get out and get see what you want to see to everybody. For example, this is a unique setup, a chaise lounge with it in its own deep slide, entertainment center there on the back. I got dual USB charging ports here. Plus I got my little suspension net over there on my rack too. Check this out, Fritz. Little spot for shoes down there, some little storage area. I mean, these are versatile options, upgraded features, and you're not leaving any creature comforts of home when you go out on the road with your Forest River Ozark. This is the 1680 BSK. So you're sitting here, you're making the memories, and then when it's time to go to bed, pull the pillows off. They just Velcro right on, they're easy to, and look, these are durable and plush. I love these because since they are removable, you can use them as extra cushion over here on the chaise if you want to, on the side. My kids will just stack them up and lay on them. Then when it's time to set up the Murphy, release the latch, set it down. You got the high density foam, camp queen size bed, right here, comfortable, easy to get on, I'm nestled up here in the front cab and with the 13.5 BTU AC if I need to get cool or the 20,000 BTU heater if I need to stay warm, I'm good to go. We are relaxing, we are reconnecting, we're having some fun. All in a brand spanking new floor plan. Storage there, storage there, 
power port here for my cell phone. When I'm ready to get back up into the couch, here we go. Locks into place. Got my cushion. And you can probably do this faster than me, you know, when, when you make it your RV. But there we go. Now we're back to having some entertainment space. And take a look at the room that we have here. This is only a one slide, 23 foot, 4,050 pound RV. Brand spanking new. This is the Forest River Ozark 1680 BSK, starting at $23,995 or as low as $5.93 a day. Did I even show the undermounted farmhouse style sink? I didn't, did I, Fritz? Oh, we got to get to that. Look, solid surface cutting boards over your sink with the high rise faucet. And having this solid surface allows us to undermount the farmhouse style sink. But take a look at the light on the dark interiors here in my kitchen. The large windows, so if I do bring the kids or the friends, if we're setting it up as a hunting cabin. You got plenty of points if you want to make this a deer blind. But if I want to watch the kids, I can right there. Dual USB charging, GFCI outlet there. I mean, this is just a nice little lightweight feature packed RV for that adventurous family or that adventurous couple that wants to have some versatility when it comes to sleeping options, have the availability to put people where they want to put them. And for starting at $23,995 or as low as $5.93 a day, I mean, I think I paid more for that than a cup of coffee we had today. You come out, you're gonna notice, now this is an aluminum sided RV and Ozark has both when they put out their models. You get the aluminum and you get the uh, fiberglass. The insulation is the same. It's really just your aesthetic. What do you want? What, what appeases you more? Some people want the aluminum sided, some people want the fiberglass sided. But you still get that, uh, that automotive tough coat on the outside of these, which helps a little bit with the insulation because it's uh, four one hundredths of an inch thick. So that adds a little bit of layer of insulation, but what it does more than that is it allows for you to not have any UV damage on your RV, which can wear and tear not only the aluminum, but also the graphics. That fading that really makes the camper look bad. Sealed safety glass all the way around this. Like I mentioned on the inside, we are pre-wired for Wi-Fi, 4G, and LTE extension. I got my fold-up steps there. Dexter Easy Lube axle right there, 3,500 pounds on that one. Nitro-filled tires. Beautiful, we got the 26 x 26 inch friction hinge door. We're gonna get to that uh, camp kitchen here in just a minute. Leveling jacks on the front. If you do have your solar panels, so you can trickle charge your battery. You got your 10 amp quick connect right here. That seamless super flex roof too, which is fully walkable, one piece, insulation on the top and the bottom. 20 pound LP tank here. Come over to the off camp side. I got my storage compartment right here. You'll see finished off plenty of room. So you want to put the chairs, the beach towels, you know, whatever you want. You got good space to do that there. Warm groove slide. Coming around to the back. Here's my 30 amp connection. Because once again, on the inside, we got that 13.5 BTU AC, 20,000 BTU furnace. So you're going to have 30 amp surface with that. Black tank flush, which is another feature you don't see a lot on entry level RVs. And I even kind of hesitate to call the Forest River Ozarks entry level because of all the features that they have in them. They take big RV features and pack them into a small RV. So having that, very nice. Because do you want to clean a black tank without a flush? If you do, you might need some help. City water connection right here. Main terminations there. Gray tank, black tank, my rear scissor jacks, as well as my low point drain. Four by four sewer hose storage there. Spare tire mounted on the back. And you'll notice with 2021, they've begun to raise the profile and the archway of those roofs a little bit more. Every year they get a little bit bigger and a little bit more barreled so that to keep that rain and snow and those elements off the top of the RV, off of you. And those three inch rubber nozzles, make sure it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't fall on you. Windows there, shower outside with hot and cold. And my favorite part of this, the external kitchen. So since this is a bunk model, having that option and having that feature is so nice because sure, you got the two burner cooktop in there, but if you do have more options to cook outside and to hang out outside, you got a large 16 foot awning with the LED light strip right there. I got my power port right here. 
my city water connection. So if I want to bring out some outside entertainment, I could. You got the small mini fridge here. So if you want to store your water, your bourbon, your beer, you could right there. But the fact that you see a lot of manufacturers upgrading the outside kitchen experience to the suburban cooktop versus the two burner cooktop, it opens up those options for cooking. You can do breakfast, you can do lunch there. You got the griddle, so do the bacon, the eggs, mix it all together, do the pancakes on there, boom. You can have breakfast for every meal. Got the little plastic clip to keep my door in there. And last but not least, this has what's known as the accessibility underneath. This is an enclosed and heated underbelly. But what they've done is they've made the underbelly separate panels that connect together. So that if you do need to access something and do some repair work, it's easy to take off. You can just get in there, get to the tanks. You don't have to worry about unrolling the entire undercarriage. But for brand spanking new, for 2021, just rolled off the production floor, the 2021 Forest River Ozark 1680 BSK. 23 feet long, roughly 4,050 pounds dry, and starting at $23,995, or as low as $5.93 a day for you and six of your friends or family members to get out and see America the safest way possible. This is a brand new first look. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, but look for a whole lot more because with over 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, you're gonna see a lot more things like these. But if you wanna come in, see one for yourself, we got over 160 locations. Come to your local camping world or Gander RV and Outdoors, or just drop us a comment down below RV or text RV to 46642. Chris, we like the 1680 BSK. We're looking for something that can be towed by our SUV that can sleep seven, has the versatility of a chaise lounge attached to the sofa. We'd like to get it. Just text RV to 46642. Drop us a comment down below RV. Chris, what else does Forest River have coming in the Ozark line? With over 80,000 RVs coming, they're going to have a lot. And if you want to get in on that and plus lock in some special show pricing, just drop us a comment down below FRESH or text FRESH to 46642. I'm Chris Young. Thank you for joining us here for the first look of the 2021 Forest River Ozark 1680 BSK. Demand for RVs is at historic levels, which is why we are working around the clock to bring you over 80,000 factory fresh RVs. That's the largest selection of RVs in the world, fresh from the factory to our stores, to your driveway or campsite. RVs are made by Americans for Americans. And now you can see America for less. Shop over 80,000 factory fresh RVs, starting at just $5 a day. Click, call, or visit your local Camping World or Gander RV and Outdoors today. Welcome to RV Pro Tips. Today we'll be covering how to plan the ultimate RV family road trip. I'm Brianna. And I'm Craig. And we're from Crazy Family Adventure. Us and our four kids, Carson, Malia, Cannon, and Knox, sold our house, everything in it, and bought an RV and have been traveling full time around North America since May 2014. We love RV travel and how it allows us to get out and explore and see so many amazing places. So we've been living, working, and traveling full-time in our RV for six years. So come learn all about how to plan the ultimate RV family road trip. So when you're ready to prepare your RV for a family trip, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. One thing is that you're going to be packing your RV for your whole trip. So you're gonna to wanna to bring with your pillows, your blankets, all those things that are gonna make you and your family comfortable. We'd also recommend making sure you bring with some games and maybe some movies, cause sometimes you run into a rainy day or just a day where everyone just wants to hang out and enjoy being at the campground and in your RV. Then there's RV meal planning. If you want to, you can plan your meals well ahead of time and make sure you have everything you need for your whole RV trip. You can literally get everything you need, have your RV packed, and be ready to go to just enjoy the trip and not have to worry about stopping at stores to pick up anything. So just like with any road trip, you wanna make sure that your either your motorhome or your tow vehicle is ready to hit the road. You may be doing some long miles or you may be doing some strenuous up and down in the mountains. So you wanna make sure that your fluids are all topped off, your tires look good, and everything under the hood is ready to go. So bring it to your local mechanic or bring it on to Camping World and they'll check it out and do a once over on your vehicle Make sure you're good to go. So the RV's ready to go, but now you need to find the route you're gonna take. You do wanna do some planning, and I'll tell you why. When we were beginning our RVers, 
We thought we could just plug in our destination and follow right along. Well, we found ourselves on a little tiny mountain road and we hit a bridge that could not handle the weight of our rig. There was nowhere to turn around. There was nothing we could do. So now we know we need to put a little bit more effort into planning our RV route. We've actually used a good SAM uh, navigation system, which where you can plug in the length, the height, and the weight of your RV, and it'll give you a safe route to travel. So it's super helpful, it's very easy and convenient, and uh, it'll keep you out of situations like that. If you are the one driving, you're probably also going to want to make sure you know what mountains you're going to be hitting. Yep. <laughs> For sure, yeah, there's definitely, there's ultimate resources out there that'll tell you what percentage grades you're going to be coming up on because you don't want to be going up something too steep where your engine may not be able to handle it or something too steep coming down where your brakes not be, might not be able to handle it. That's a very scary situation. So it'll keep you away from all that stuff. And then when it comes to planning, do we talk to our kids about it beforehand? And I would say yes we do and no we don't. <laughs> so there's some places that we want to go and we're just like, nope, this is what we're doing, this is where we're heading, we want to head back to Montana, that's what we're going to do. But then on the other hand, we also know that our kids have a ton of friends they've met across the country since we've been on the road that they want to go and visit them. We do take their input into account for sure, but then also there are times that we just do what it is that we know we want to do or where the weather's nice or, or if we have a work event and again, can you tell there's no rhyme or reason to what we do? <laughs> yep, there isn't. <laughs> so we're gonna go on these long road trips with kids. So how do we keep them entertained? Well. We're gonna be honest here, yeah. folks. We're gonna be totally honest. We've been doing this a long time. We also are in support of electronics. You give your kids their iPad or their tablet. Yep, no <laughs> shame in that answer right there. <laughs> they put their headphones on, they watch it. I work, he listens to what he wants to while he's driving. Mm -hmm. It's good, we can yeah. drive for like six, seven hours like that. Everyone's happy, everyone's good. It yeah. works out for everyone. Now, if there's times and we're like, okay, we've just driven for five hours today, five hours tomorrow, we're gonna take a little break. We may turn on a podcast that we all listen to. We'll also do Audible, where we'll listen to some books together. So we will do some of those things as well. But the reality is, if you're driving across the country, let your kids watch a movie or TV. Yeah, there's nothing worse than trying to focus on the road when kids are screaming in the background. You just can't do it, so. And the other thing that I've realized is once I heard one too many times, Mom, I'm hungry. Mom, I want food. So now what I do is I actually pack a lunchbox for each kid before we hit the road. And I tell them basically, this is your food for the whole trip. So you can eat it right when you get in the car or you can spread it out through the whole time, but this is all you got, so figure out what you want to do. And I will tell you, that has been a life changer too, because now, with their headphones on and their tablet and their bag of food, <laughs> we don't hear from them. So it really works out good for everyone that everyone gets a chance to do what they want to do and chill out and relax while we're driving to our next destination. So when we're traveling and we're going far distances, do we either go the whole way or do we break it up at a couple hours at a time? Yeah, and typically I like to stay around the four hour mark for driving. I think that keeps everybody kind of like fresh and not like totally wiped and especially me driving. Um, that's kind of like where we like to keep it. Now that being said, if we're like six or seven hours, we may just power through to get there in one shot just so then we won't have to do it again the next day. Well, I think it also depends on the weather. Like if the weather is really sure. good and it's sunny skies and we can just keep driving, it also depends just the mood everyone in the family is in. I'll say there have been times when Craig said, we're gonna go three hours and then we get rolling and like seven hours later we're like, oh, we kept driving and now we're here. So when we're trying to plan a road trip, we wanna take a few things into account. First of all, we wanna think, what are some things that Craig and I wanna do? What are some things our kids wanna do? And depending on the age of your kids, this can change too. So we're gonna to try to find something that really fits within their ages. So they're 13, 10, 10, and eight. So that really means that we can do a lot of that fun outdoor stuff with them. So we try to find destinations that we can go to that we can do that. So I think it really comes down to what you want to get out of that trip. Are you trying to see a bunch of sites, like trying to see all the national parks, stop at a bunch of attractions on the way, do a bunch of things? Or would you rather just be going and just going somewhere where you can sit and just enjoy it? But I would say something to keep in mind when you're traveling with kids. They get bored and over those attractions really really quick so do not plan a trip where you're gonna go and see like every day like three different like monuments or different like they're not gonna want to do it so make sure you also include days in there where the kids can just run free and play and rock climb and swim and go to the beach and do things like that so go plan your RV trip it will be an awesome time and your family will love it it'll be some bumps in the road it'll be some chaos and some craziness but that also helps get your family closer too so get that RV and hit the road
The best things happen outdoors, and they start at Gander RV and Outdoors. Did you know that you can get a motorhome that sleeps six for only $3.29 a month? To learn more, visit GanderRV.com today. Boy, lucky me, Sean Parn. I've got, uh, of course, uh, Nellie Jergy with yep, me. Yep. I've got, good to see you. The it's flip great to Tilby's. see you this too, Renee, Sean. Uh, Renee Tilby. <laughs> and this has been a fun, I love that Chris showed us that first look. And whenever we get a first look at something that just came off the line mm-hmm. and you get to see some of the new models, we have so many 2021s to show you. Ian's going to be so, so awesome. busy later. we got Chris coming up in a moment. Uh, but we're getting ready to go into the Take It Easy travel trailers. But first, Sean, I really have to ask you. Are you going to be changing every segment? I know. Like you know what? Do we need to feel happening here? I, I think I'm going to channel my inner Reba McIntyre and uh, change it. every segment. I think that would be fun. Just to show you the assortment. What? You know, you and uh, your husband and I were, were talking about some fishing stuff. And, uh, of course, with our special hosts throughout the, the last few weeks, we've been talking mm-hmm. about turkey hunting. And we've been talking about so deer awesome. hunting. And, and being able to... To get into our retail section and to get into RV and Outdoor and see how many different types of And you were literally outfits. getting into the retail section over Man, here. Literally. I, he and just you know what, Sean? It. You make it look good. So. <laughs> Always. Of course. Of course. Well, I could you fit go a small for it. person in here. <laughs> there's so much room and they're so warm. I mean, it's so cold outside. Right. Might as yet, well. You put these on, and all of a sudden, I feel like this could also be part of my new weight loss program. <laughs> like sweat it off. You sweat, sweat it, it off. off. Yeah. You know what? That, that works. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you guys have been uh, talking about winterizing and yes. some of the problems that we've experienced with batteries and different things in the winter travel mm-hmm. trailer season, but we're getting ready for spring. It's right around the corner. Thank goodness, Thank right? Yes. We all need to thaw out. Same words. Thank goodness. <laughs> Thinking on the same wavelength over here. Yeah. So travel trailers now mm-hmm. are a chance to get out there, uh, something that's light, something that you can tow with an SUV. Oh, easy peasy. Yeah. We and got options for everyone. Especially when you get into some of the first time RVers that are getting into a trailer. Let's Let's take a look right now. We're going east to west with a Silver Lake 20 KRD. Take it away. Take it easy. Take it. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What's happening? Don't mind me and my horrible singing. Chris Young, Ultimate RV Show. This segment is all about the taking it easy RVs. And you know, as a lifelong Bears fan, avid Bears fan, I got a whole Bears basement. I know about taking it easy because we can't get hyped up about too much, can we? <laughs> hey all I am seated in the beautiful 30 feet, 5 inch long, 6,500 pound, brand spanking new to the East to West Silver Lake lineup, the 20 KRD. Starting at $20,995 or as low as $5.19 a day for you and four of your closest friends and or family to get out and see America the safest way possible. This is a slideless rear dining king bed RV that east to west I'm a huge fan of, mainly because of their sustainable manufacturing process. They reduce and reuse to really shrink that carbon footprint. But in doing so, it allows them to pass along savings to you. But for 2021, they kicked out this brand new 20 KRD, giving couples a chance to really kind of dip their toe in the water at an entry level, but with tremendously upgraded features. You're talking about, we got new Shaw linoleum flooring. You got a 35,000 BTU furnace, a 15,000 BTU AC with quick cool, and all the amenities and comfort of home when you want to get out on the road. Now, pick yourself, go into a Bears game. I'm just going to stick with the Bears thing. Sorry for anybody else. Let's just insert your favorite team name. You got these large panoramic windows with the wood balances and the privacy shades. You pull up to the lake, the mountains, the plains, wherever you want to go, grandma's backyard, and you're able to see and reconnect with your loved ones right here on this plush vinyl or I don't don't even know what this is. I don't know what material it is, but I do know this. It's freaking comfortable, man. And these things are plush. This kicks out into a jackknife sofa. So if you want to make it a sleeper, you absolutely can. One person can get on there unless you like to spoon and get tight. Two people can fit on there. Because I mean, if you think about it, I mean, look at the space that I have right here. I sleep like this anyway. So I mean, my wife, who's, who's skinny and perfect and gorgeous, could easily fit right here. Got my dual USB charging ports. I got my storage up top. I got my speakers mounted. We got 81 inches of clearance here inside, giving us plenty of room and a large dinette. Now, a lot of times in the rear dining uh, RVs, the dinette will be kind of short. 
and you won't really have room for two people. But as you can see, I'm a big dude. I'm over 6'2". I'm not gonna tell you how much I weigh because I eat way too much. Uh, but this is plenty of room to have four people sit here and reconnect, which is what's so great about RVing taking it easy, getting out, and just enjoying each other and enjoying the country in your own space. It's your RV. Take it and do with it as you please. I mean, you don't have to worry about booking travel, getting a hotel room, sitting in an airplane, and wondering, how safe is this really? Because you're coming in your home, your RV. Entertainment-wise, you want to put a TV, you got the TV backer mount right there, cable connection, satellite connection, power port, the whole nine, this reduces down into a sleeper. Plus, I got storage space underneath. You got a 10 cubic foot, 12 volt fridge. Another nice addition to the lineup for this year. Look at the space that we have there. Plus, I got pantry shelf storage space there. Or if you want to use this as a hunting cabin or a fishing cabin. I mean, you know, we're in a beautiful central part of the U.S. where you got great hunting and fishing out here. So imagine putting your tackle boxes or your gear right here. Whatever you want, because it's your RV, you can do with it as you please. When you are ready to do some camp cooking, check me out over here on the side. Solid pressed surface countertops, undermounted farmhouse style sink with the sprayer nozzle. Love this large window over here on the campsite. I got my three burner cooktop and my oven. Lots of solid wood cabinets. I mean, I like these because when you're in transit, these little latches, as you can see, they stick, man. They stay secure so you don't have to worry about stuff flying open while you're going down the road. Solid wood cabinetry on the construction, flush mounted Magic Chef high output microwave. Got my little storage compartment here. My AM FM Furion Command Center is right here. And this, this 20KRD, brand spanking new to the lineup, starting at $20,995 or as low as $5.19 a day. It comes with a 45-gallon fresh tank, 60-gallon gray, 30-gallon black tank. It only weighs 6,500 pounds dry. I mean, if you got an F-150, uh, you could easily tow this beauty. Coming into the bathroom, check this out. Another upgrade for 2021, high-rise porcelain bowl with the foot flush. We got that walk-in shower, that single surround. And since they give you that suspension door there or the suspension curtain, um, you get so much more room to get in. It's already 81 inches in height, so the skylight will give you additional headroom, but you don't really need it. Large, single basin sink, plenty of storage over there too. And I have the mirrored medicine cabinet. But the great thing about east to west you get king size beds on top of quality construction, conservative, just great for the environment because of how they make everything. They reduce that carbon footprint. They're giving you all the reasons. They're checking all the boxes for you to say, I'm going to take my family out and see America the safest way possible. Solid wood cabinetry on my wards. I got drawers over there. Plus, I got hideaway cubby storage on both sides of my king size bed high density foam mattress and strut supported storage underneath. For an entry RV that starts at 20,995, this beauty is packed. And you gotta remember, this is slideless. You get all this space that's slideless, 6,500 pounds, man, for as low as $5.19 a day. This is one where you say, hey, Chris, well, you know, we're a couple, we're ready to dip our toe in the water. How do we get this one? What, what's easy? Just text RV to 46642 or drop me a comment down below RV. Because east to west, I've been a fan of them. You can only find them at Gander and Camping World. Great, what we like to call private label RVs. Look at the large awning with the LED light strip there, sealed safety glass all the way around, large grab handle to get me in and out safely. Plus, I got the solid step over steps. Double axle RV down there on those Dexter Easy Lubes. LP Quick Connect over here on the rear. So if I want to bring my grill and cook up some steaks, you know, because, oh, we're in that area where we got some of the best meat in the country, man. Oh, I love it. Ooh, gosh, speaking of, I want a beef sandwich so bad. 4x4 four four sewer hose storage there, spare tire. And on the back, we are set up for backup camera prep. John, I don't know if you can get that. And take a look at this big window, man. Look how huge that is. That's getting out and seeing America the safest way possible. They have just a heated and enclosed underbelly too on top of all the things that they've added. You got new interiors, new exteriors, plus a heated and enclosed underbelly on a camper that starts at $20,995? Come on, man. That's one that you can't beat. 
sewer outlet connection right here, AKA my dumps or terminals, gray tank, black tank there, fresh water drain. Did you notice the light come on when I walked up to the other side of the pass-through storage here? They have motion sensing light here. They have your connections with a porthole here, so you don't have to worry about having everything connected outside. You can run it in here, lock the door, city water connection, power, and cable right there. Plus, I got my sprayer port, so if I want to use that, I can. My fresh water connection here. Diamond plated rock guard, that super flex roof going all the way over the top. Twin 20 pound LP tanks, plus a powered tongue jack with the LED security light. And if you want to set up your solar panels to trickle charge your battery, you got your 10 amp quick connect right here and you're finished off pass through storage. On all of the east to west, they have upgraded and made the storage a little bit bigger. On some of them, you even get the 28 by 16 doors, which allows you to put bikes and, I mean, easily fit your camp chairs in there. My Furion external speakers right here, and my hang area. It's all about taking it easy. And when I want to just chill out, and take it easy. I wanna sit here and I wanna have my three finger bourbon pour outside. There's no better way to do it or see America safer than it is in an RV. And you know, we spend so much time at the Ultimate RV Show National Tour talking about the RVs and talking about the features and the amenities. Um, sure, what you're getting is a physical item, but at the end of the day, uh, what I'm doing, what my job is, is I feel like it's important for me to kind of enforce that this is a way for you to really kind of pay yourself what you owe. This is your way of completing those dreams of disconnecting and reconnecting with your family. If you feel like something's been missing and you say, it's, for the last year, we've all just been, oh, just a ball of tension. Well, now we have a chance to let all of that go, get out, see America the safest way possible, and spend time with our families. Reconnect with those loved ones. We didn't get to do it, and you owe it to yourself. It's, it, you might not be thinking about it, it might be something that's the farthest from your mind, but when you finally put two and two together, hopefully it'll make sense. Well, Chris, you're supposed to be pitching RVs. No, I'm trying to get a country full of happy people, because I think that's gonna benefit all of us in the long run. I'd much rather have that. I think it just makes a much huger impact when people are smiling and enjoying each other than anything else. But that's just me. So if you say, hey man, <clears throat> I like that 20 KRD, sleeps five, roughly 6,500 pounds, 30 feet long, starting at $5.19 a day, as low as 20,995. Hey man, how do I get this one? We can have it delivered to you, even have the paperwork sent out to you. You don't even have to leave your house. Uh, but obviously you can come check it out if you want one. Just text RV to 46642, drop me a comment down below RV. Now with over 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, woo, and you say, all right, Chris, this is cool, but I need something with bunks, I need a class A, class C, you know, whatever it may be. We got you covered there too. Plus we got over 160 locations, thousands of people standing by right now to help you find the one that's right for you. What are you gonna tow with? Where are you gonna take it? How many people you need to sleep? Where are you gonna go to relax? They'll help you through that process and find the one that's right for you. Just text FRESH to 46642 or drop me a comment down below. FRESH. Now, we do have a lot of shows going on. It's that time of year, so you might be thinking of going to the competition. Well, Chris, <clears throat> I think I'm going to go to the competition and, and see what they have. Well, I think you should put handles on a snowball because that's going to accomplish the same task. Doesn't make no sense. Like putting a screen door on a submarine, ain't it? Exactly. But if you still want to do it because you're that person, I will beat that deal guaranteed. Or I'll give you a thousand bucks in cash. Just text me DEAL to 46642. Drop me a comment down below, DEAL. It's all about those RVs for relaxing. We got more coming up with the Ultimate RV Show National Tour. From sunup to sundown, we are designing your next big adventure. Building your family vacation. Delivering your memories that will last a lifetime. We know it's more than just an RV, which is why we are working around the clock to bring over 80,000 RVs fresh from the factory to our stores, to your driveway or campsite. Built by Americans for Americans and starting at less than $5 per day. Click, call, or visit your local Camping World today. 
Man, oh man, Chris is showing us some beautiful units. Now, folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today with the blizzard we've had coming through, this big cold front, I want to talk a little bit about something that is on the top of a lot of people's minds, and that is generators. So, uh, and specifically for RV use. So when you're out there, you're starting to do some shopping, look at generators, you'll find there's going to be two main types. You have your standard generator, and then you will have the inverter generator. And you will notice that inverter will generally have a higher price tag associated along with it. But here's the thing, and I'm telling you right now, as far as RVers go, it is 100% worth the extra cash. Why? We're going to have two big reasons. The first one is the fact you're going to get cleaner power. And what I mean by that is your standard generator, it'll take your fuel, which is generally going to be gasoline, it'll convert it into AC, but you will get a flux in wattage, right? And what that essentially does is if you have any electronics that are going to be sensitive to that, which for the record, RVs have a lot of electronics from, you know, your refrigerator to some of the new displays, it can actually damage those electronics because they're not built to be able to take that, that, um, that difference in the voltage. That's what's known as harmonic distortion. So what they have is they have these inverters where it takes that AC, converts it into DC, and back into AC, which therefore makes it very clean. So if you plug in any laptops, again, your refrigerators, all the appliances, you will be good to go. So that's going to be number one. It's going to help save you a little bit on the back end from damaged appliances. The second big thing is noise. Folks, as a fellow RVer, please, please, please don't go into the campground and fire up a standard generator. It is loud and you're going to upset a lot of people. The inverters will be nice and quiet. And that's, again, going to be a big thing, especially if you plan on running it overnight, if you want the AC going and people around you want to sleep. Now, another big question a lot of people have is about sizing. And I'm not gonna go super in depth. I will tell you this, folks, at every Camping World and Gander RV across the nation, we have experts that are very, very knowledgeable when it comes to generators, and they will 100% help you size it based upon your needs. Because there's not a one size fits all, which is why we have so many different sizes. Now, I will give you a couple, a couple tips, right? A couple hints as we go through here, but just keep in mind, if you're out there, you're generator shopping, come on in, talk to one of the experts and let them help you size it up. So one of the most common ones we sell is this right here, which is the uh, Honda 2200. Now, 2,200 watts isn't a ton. So you may be thinking, well, why is this so popular? And here's what it is. With this, and we have a champion model as well, there will be a parallel cable and you can hook these up in parallel. That way you're gonna get 4,400 4, watts of power. It's essentially going to double that. And the reason that's important is because you need right around 4,000 to be able to kick your AC on. And that's a lot of people's end goal, right? Because that's one of the biggest things that compressor kicks on. You wanna make sure you have the starting watts. The running watts generally aren't going to be as much of a concern. But the reason people prefer two of these is because of portability and weight, right? When you're looking at an RV, storage is going to be key. You want to make sure you have a good place to store it. And folks, I don't know about you, but I'd rather carry two of these, one in each arm at 45 pounds a piece, than carry something like I have right down below there in the box, you know, that we're looking at you know, over 80 pounds. It's almost 90 pounds. You know, it has two handles. It's big, it's awkward, it's hard to carry, and it's hard to put anywhere. And honestly, with two of these, you'll be getting more power out of them anyway. So uh, again, I highly recommend the, the 2200, or there's also the Champion, the 2500. A couple differences between the two. Both are extremely popular. The Honda here will actually give you a tiny bit, uh, or it'll be a little bit quieter, right? It's about five decibels quieter, which is actually a pretty big noise difference. And it's a Honda engine. If you know anything about Honda, you know, they are very, very well renowned for their small engines. The Champion, however, is a dual fuel. So what that means is if you run out of gasoline, you can actually use propane. It won't put out quite as much power, but the fact that you have an alternative method to be able to power your RV in the case you're stuck, you know, if it's cold out like it is right now, can definitely come in handy. So folks, again, stop on by to your Camping World or Gander RV. Let us help you size a generator. Make sure you're gonna get what works for your needs. Chris, my friend, take it away. Back to taking it easy, RVs. And let me tell you what, when it comes to just relaxing and chilling, that's what this segment is all about. RVs where you can just get out and just take it easy because you're going to have features and amenities that you won't find in a lot of RVs, upgraded features, comfort style and space so that you, your loved ones and your family members can sit back and take it easy. This 30 feet, 4 inch long, 5,700 pound dry weight, 5 sleeping beauty is the Heartland Ballard M27. What's up? It's Chris Young back with you again. And I love this one because of the versatility of having the these, the, I call them captain's chairs, but they're really recliners. Um, 
it just makes life easy. I got my trifold sofa over here, so if I wanted to sit there with my loved one, I could. But right here, I got this large panoramic window, so no matter where I pull up, whatever beautiful sight that I'm gonna have out here, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, I mean, Nebraska, just so much beautiful land out here, so many options to go see and do. Just kick back with your loved one, have a drink in your hand, pop a beer, get the cross breeze going, knock out if you want to. RVing is about enjoying the loved time that you have with your loved ones and being able to do it easily and affordably. And during the Ultimate RV Show National Tour, you get to do that. For example, this Mallard M27 starts at $26,995 or as low as $6.67 a day. You get some of those upgraded features like the barrel ceilings, the Master Chef kitchen, which I'm going to get to, the upgraded style furniture that is light in appearance, but the furniture is still dark because it shows stain and wear and tear a whole lot less than the white or lighter furniture. But in some of these models, you do get the reversible pads so you can do light if you want to do light. With Heartland Mallard, you're going to get that four inch thick foam core on the roof, fully walkable two inch thick sidewalls foam core, laminated, easy to clean, slip resistant flooring. We'll talk about the Asdell on the outside. So you'll be able to keep the temperature where you want it, how you want it, with things like a 13,500 uh, 13, BTU air conditioner, 30,000 BTU furnace. Some of the Harlan Mallards have fireplaces in them. There are just so many features that you can take your family, take your loved ones, and just take it easy in your RV. The Harlan Mallard is a great, affordable way to go. And starting at $26,995, or as low as $6.67 a day, man, you can't beat it. Master Chef inspired kitchen. Check me out over here on the campsite. I got my 70 30 60 40 however you want to measure it you know depends on which side of the team you're betting on this week split sink right here with the high rise faucet and sprayer handle decorative backsplash i got my three burner cooktop which is flush mounted with the glass cover giving me more prep space to do the cutting or the cleaning that i need to do I'm also set up with a little gray stone oven. If I want to do some baking, bam, put some ribs in there and let them go before I take them outside and flash them on the grill, I can rock and roll. Got a little LED light, uses a night light right there. Flush mounted gray stone, high output microwave, solid wood cabinetry here on my doors. And I like the graphite or matte black fixtures that you have around here. Another cool feature that they've added um, if you haven't seen the doodle station, these are cool. These are refrigerators that have a coating on them uh, that allows you to write in chalk. So if you want to leave some notes, you know, just let the kids have fun. Maybe it's a rainy day. Let them draw some stuff, do some doodling. It's just a cool little feature that you can enjoy taking easy when you're out and about. Plus the fridge freezer combo runs on both gas and electric, gives you plenty of space to do what you need to do. I mean, just take a look right there. It's easy. Oh, and these floors, speaking of easy, easy sweep floors. So whether I'm kicked back, relaxing in my Allure chairs or my Allure sofa, I'm going to be relaxing with loved ones and making memories that we did not get a chance to do in 2020. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, sure, what the physical thing is an RV. But what I'm really trying to do is tell you that with these RVs, you can accomplish your dreams of getting out and about, reconnecting with the loved ones. It, you may not be making two and two together. Well, you know, we get a chance to go, blah, blah, blah. But have you really disconnected and reconnected with the loved ones? Last year was so stressful. 2021 is gonna be the year of RV travel. So now is the time to pay yourself what you owe, which is that get out and reconnect. We have been so, just, just, ooh, good, ooh. I don't know how many times I wanted to just crack under the pressure. But we can't. We have to adult. We have to get out. We have to maintain. We have to do whatever we need to do. As family, as friends, as lovers, as, as parents, I think it's time we owe it to ourselves to take a break. And you can do that in things like this Heartland Mallard M27. This is your home. You have tons of storage. You have features that you won't get in lots of places, like storage, solid wood cabinets, full extension on ball bearing drives, booth dinettes to reconnect with loved ones over meals, over playing cards, storage underneath, LED sconces, 
the doodle station, my entertainment center right here with my AM FM Fury and Command Center with CD and DVD player. I got more storage up here. I got bathroom with good countertop space, plastic bowl with the foot flush, single surround shower right here with corner notches. And this is just where when I get finished hunting, fishing, or just hiking, biking, I can just be like, ah, oh, we're out, we're doing stuff. I got my loved ones, I got my family, I got my friends. We are doing what we didn't get a chance to do that sometimes some of us may not even realize we needed to do. You may not know it. Something's missing. What could it be? Maybe it's you getting out and about and seeing America the safest way possible. I don't know. I'm only trying to help, man. If I can help one family reconnect with each other, save some stress, then dude, my job is accomplished. Chris, you're supposed to be selling RVs. I'm supposed to be helping you realize that you owe it to yourself to get out. That's my job. Plain and simple. Check out my table that I got right here, which, you know, it does reduce down into a sleeper, but you can also take it out if you want. And then when you want to take it easy, why don't you take it easy breezy on your king size? Oh man, this is nice. This is one of these foam mattresses. Oh, hey. Okay, y'all, y'all give me a minute. I need it. Oh my God, a king size bed, which you're not gonna find a lot of RVs either. Having that is a nice feature. I got me some king size storage underneath as well. Well, I mean, you got box storage here, plus you got a little mudroom storage for shoes. Wait until you see the King Kong size storage underneath. But this is a good little feature to have. I got some 12 volt USB or excuse me, I got dual USB charging ports on both sides and power ports. So if I want to set up a CPAP machine, I can. I got the frosted glass inlays for my ward storage and my storage up top. Plus I got me some component shelves, little LED backlight giving me some additional, you know, ambiance if you want. Plus a solid pocket door and more storage behind Fritz, my man right here. And US or uh, cable and power. It's, it's all about just getting out and about. The Harlan Mallard M27 starting at $26,995 as low as $6.67 a day. To sleep five people comfortably, 5,700 pounds, dry weight. You're saying, Chris, I like it. How do I get this one? I can have it delivered to you because it's all about taking it easy. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your camp chair or your home. Uh, but just drop me a comment down below, RV or text an RV to 46642. I got solid step over steps. We got the heated and enclosed underbelly, double axle right here with that wide track suspension. Man, this is, I said, right, right. Okay, we got about that much width in between the tires. That wide track suspension is gonna make sure when you're going down the road, you're not gonna be rocking back and forth and doing all that fun stuff <laughs> like, like moving RVs. We got LED light strip on my awning. We got the external speakers right here. And of course, I got a big old post blocking me between me and John. You know, but hey, at least I got somebody blocking for me, <laughs> unlike the Chiefs. Oh! oh! Too soon? Is it too soon? Too soon? I'm so sorry. Look, I'm a Bears fan, so I can say those things because I know disappointment, okay? I've lived it for 30 years. So, John, come here, check this out. I had mentioned on the inside, the King Kong size pass through storage, 67, up to 67 and a half cubic feet of storage. If you want to fit a Jason there, you can fit a Jason there. Powered stabilizer jacks on the front and the rear, magnetic anti-slam latches, covered hinges, so you don't get those nasty streaks when it rains, the rust going down. You don't want that, man. Nobody wants that. Diamond plated rock guard, painted fiberglass in cap with the LED running lights. That's beautiful. Does that reflect off my 789 head? Look how, that's just beautiful. And it's automotive coated too. Less wind resistance, aerodynamic, lightweight. You got that single welded I-beam frame under there too, which is just reinforced, solid and sturdy. Twin 20 pound LP tanks, powered tongue jack up here. If I wanna trickle charge my battery with my solar panels, I got my 10 amp quick connect right here. Other side, I'm a pass through storage there. And one of those features that, that I like um, I consider a must have. <clears throat> external shower with hot and cold. Um, Cause when you do get out and about, you're getting all dirty. 
nasty on the planes. You know, maybe you've been out breaking horses and you want to come get cleaner. You don't want to take that stuff, you know, into your camper because that's just nasty. You can clean yourself off right there. <clears throat> but when it comes to taking it easy, that's a good one to do it because that's what it's all about. It's your RV. Take it easy and enjoy life. Get outside and do what you need to do because you owe it to yourself. This Mallard M27, 5,700 pounds dry weight, 30 feet, 4 inches long, can easily sleep 5, starts at $26,995 or as low as $6.67 a day. If you want this one, drop me a comment down below, RV or text RV. 246642. Now, with 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, you say, Chris, I like this, but I need one with bunks. Maybe I need blah, blah, blah. We got people standing by who help you out. Text FRESH to 46642. Drop me a comment down below. FRESH. Now, you could go to the competition. That's fine. You could also pack a wooden frying pan. That's fine, too. You're going to have the same result either way you go. But it's your prerogative. Do as you wish. Just give me a chance to beat that competitor's deal, because I will or I'll give you a thousand bucks in cash, seriously. Uh, and to do that, all you gotta do is text BEAT to 46642, drop me a comment down below, BEAT. We got more of those beautiful Take It Easy RVs coming up as the Ultimate RV Show National Tour continues with one of these next. Camping World is the one-stop shop for all your outdoor essentials. Shop chairs and side tables starting at only $9.99 and patio lights starting at $10.99. Grills for only $9.99? Who knew travel could be so easy? Your vacations just got a little brighter, a little tastier, and a little cozier. See America for less when you shop at Camping World. Sean Parr, I got Bryce Jergy with me. I hope you enjoyed the Ultimate RV Show National Tour. You know, the interesting thing, Bryce, here we are standing here. We watched Ian a little bit ago talking about generators. We had some folks here at the Gander RV and Outdoors of Wichita that were standing there watching him, came right over, started asking questions. He answered every single one of them. Bam! A couple of generators going out the door. It's yep. that simple. We're going to beat every price, no matter what it is, our retail, our RVs. We've got it taken care of. And if you're not in on this deal... Man, the folks that are not watching the Ultimate RV Show are missing out. Missing out big time, even especially on the giveaways, which we yes! got right now. Ultimate Woo! giveaway! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, this giveaway right now, we're giving away a $100 gift card. So use it in-store, online. There's a lot you can do with $100 at Camping World Again RV. You know what? Some of the outfits that I'll be wearing later easily <laughs> under $100, as yeah. a matter of fact. So $100 gift card. Who's our winner? Our winner is Suzanne Shively. Suzanne Woo! Shively, pick yourself up 100 bucks if you are not registered right now. You are VS. That's what you text to, 46642. It's that it. simple. Once you're registered, you're registered for the entire Ultimate RV Show National Tour. We're going into the Keystone Passport. This is the Rear Living 2900. Take a look. It's all about taking it easy, and you can do it with the Swiss Army Knife of RVs ringing in at 6,100 pounds dry, 33 feet, 6 inches long, a six-sleeping beauty known as the Keystone Passport 2900 RL. What's up? It's Chris Young. Hopefully going to help you find the RV that's going to help you Take it easy, because these are all take it easy RVs. So, the Keystone Passports. If you know the Keystone name, hopefully you do, you know about their quality construction. They have everything from the Key TV multi-source connection to all their colored connectors and wires so that when it comes time to fix in anything, it's easy to do. They are one of the top manufacturers of RVs for who knows how many years. And the Passport is all about giving you all, everything that you need to make sure that that camping experience is as best as it can be without going overboard. Hence, the Swiss Army knife of RVs. So for example, this one, 33 feet long, 6,100 pounds dry, comes in at $31,995 or as low as $7.66 a day. With options for entertaining, sleeping, and enjoying each other's company from a trifold sleeper sofa that is plush, leatherette, and comfortable. Two, my favorite thing, on the carpet, because you can move them around. These, I call them captain's chairs, but you know, they're recliners. I mean, at the end of the day, when it's your RV, you can call it whatever you want. You can call these Hulk chairs. I mean, it's just your RV, do with it as you please. But you're gonna see during this segment, a lot of the rear living RVs, rear living, rear dining, because that's what taking it easy is. Giving you space to take it easy and reconnect with the loved ones. Picture yourself seated right here. 
large panoramic window, wood valances, quality constructions, over 80 inches of height with these barreled ceilings. We even have attention to detail with the wood strips going over the seams. That's the quality that Keystone puts in their manufacturing, just a little sample of it. Now, I wanna put my water, my soda, whatever. I got my power ports right here to charge my phone. Large windows giving me a cross breeze. I'm looking at the mountains, the lake, whatever. But I'm just <sighs> relaxing. Something we didn't get to do much of last year. But now, I'm taking it easy. And you can too, because we can make it so easy that we can have this RV delivered to you. You don't even have to get up from your chair. You can get a virtual walkthrough of any RV that you want. If you want this 2900 RL, starting at $7.66 a day or, or $31,995, um, starting at $31,995. Uh, we'll send you the paperwork, let you talk to finance people, have it overnighted to you if you need to, have it postage paid so you don't even have to pay for a stamp to send it back. Then we'll deliver it to you. But Chris, I got a trade in. Okay, we'll take it up too. We'll just pick it up and bring it back with us. No problem. Um, we really make it easy because 2021 is gonna be the year of RV travel. And when you're looking for creature comforts of home, affordability, quality construction, these Keystone Passports fit the bill. I mean, look, we even have carpetless slides right here because as you've seen in the past, hopefully you've seen in the past, if you've ever, if you've ever had carpet in your home or, your, or wherever, you know that it's not the easiest thing to clean sometimes. Same thing with RV. If you have carpet in there, it gets dirty quick. So having this type of carpetless slide really helps out. Tack that on to the Hyperdeck flooring that we have here, which is easy to clean, water resistant. I mean, slip resistant, boom. Ready for entertaining when you take it easy? Got the large TV on the swivel with the little hideaway storage behind it. Check this out, Fritz. This is where I put the, girl, the good Girl Scout cookies because my family loves to take all my favorite ones. They always eat the last one and put the box back. That makes me want to just yell. To, to, why are you going to... I'm excited about having my peanut butter patty and you're going to take the last one and leave the box in there. That's just a mean trick on me that you don't have to pull on me. Stop it. That's why I have these hideaways to put my good stuff back there and my bourbon. Now, frosted glass inlays right here in my storage cabinets. Plus, we got them down here. I got my IRV Technologies Command Center, which is Bluetooth, HDMI, plus USB, and dual zones. So if I want to play the music inside or out, I got the option to do both. Got my little component storage and the key TV multi-source connection right there. Make my way over to the living area and the kitchen. And right away, the thing that I liked about the 2900 RL uh, was we got a booth dinette. You really don't see that a lot in um, the rear living or the rear dining RVs because, you know, they're mostly for couples. These, you gotta take it easy, take it easy with the fam. Picture this, you gotta finish making yourself a camp cook meal. And I'm gonna get to the kitchen here in a minute. But you're at a football game, you're tailgating, you're doing whatever. Kids are having fun, you're laughing about the hunt or the fish that you just did, you know, hike, bike, whatever. You're out and you're doing stuff. Playing the board games, playing the card games, reconnecting. My, my wife and my kids, we just started playing Skipbo. I'd never played it. Apparently my, my wife is really, really good at it. She's been playing it as a kid. Um, we went camping. We didn't expect rain, it rained on us. So we had to go back to the RV and we were playing Skipbo. Now we could have played that at home. But the kids talk about how we played it in the RV. And if you got a family, those little memories are the things that they will remember for a lifetime. I, I do, I still remember when I would go camping with my dad and his Scotty. Um, we went everywhere in that thing. I remember that like it was yesterday. I was eight, eight through 14. And I can't remember where I parked. Come over here to the campsite, we got the solid surface press countertop. I love how they extend my prep space by flush mounting the three burner cooktops over here and giving me this glass cover. So if I need to do some prep, I can. I got this little extra space. Then I got my grill style grate over my burners. Easy to move stuff around. LED accent light on my controls. I got my Furion oven right there. I got my extra large Dometic fridge freezer combo that runs on both gas and electric. 
giving you that nice option of swipping out. If you needed microwave something, got the little high point microwave here. More of that frosted glass inlay. Not only the attention to detail, but the aesthetics that Keystone puts in their height and their passports is what makes them stand out in my mind. Um, let's take a look at the space that you have up here. And they didn't have to add a spice rack, but they did. Look at that spice rack, or if you like the little bottles, Boom, boom, boom. You could also put your Ric Flair and your Dusty Rhodes figurines up there, your Brian Erlackers, your Mike Singletary's, your Richard Dent's, your Kevin Butler's, your Walter Payton's. Actually, Walter would be up top. That's where he'd go. I put Willie Galt down there easily. Undermounted stainless steel sink farmhouse style with the high rise faucet and the sprayer. Boom. Even got me some storage down here underneath. You know what? I'm going to take this with me as we go through the rest of the camper. That's just how we do. Now, maybe I shouldn't because I'm hitting everything. If you want to sit and just chill and take it easy, how about giving you a little blue light underneath a bench seat with hangers, AKA a mudroom, before you get to the bathroom? Come on, man, for as low as $7.66 a day? That's, that's just, that's where do I sign? More storage here. I love it. I got my GE controls for my furnace and for my uh, AC. Now, 30,000 BTU furnace, 15,000 uh, AC, uh, 50,000 BTU on the AC. I like how they added the GE because uh, GE is a much you know recognizable brand. Nothing wrong with Dometic, nothing wrong with any of that, but just another little upgraded feature inside your RV. Neo angled shower here with the glass enclosure and the clear skylight with the uh, with the fan, giving you plenty of room. Got the plastic bowl with the foot flush, the single vanity sink. I got my medicine cabinet over here. More storage there. You know, just giving you a little bit of that separation of space. Having the mud room too is is a nice little feature to add in. I really wasn't expecting that with the 2900 RL. Come in here, we got the queen size bed. You got the barn style pocket door uh, separating this from that living area and plenty of space from the ward storage to my nightstand space. I got dual USB charging ports over here on the campsite, strut supported storage right there and dual USB charging in 110 over there on the off camp side. And just because when you do bring the family along, now this 2900 RL will easily sleep six people. Um, so sometimes if the kids wanna go out and have fun, you wanna stay in, you wanna access, or vice versa, you have your own entry point here into the master. Arch ceilings, plenty of space. But starting at 31,995 or as low as $7.66 a day, this is the Keystone Passport 2900 RL. This can easily by, be yours by just texting RV to 46642 or dropping me a comment down below RV. Now, during the Ultimate RV Show National Tour, we won't really have a good chance to show you everything that we want to show you on these RVs. But don't worry. We got people standing by who will answer your questions. They will, they'll tell you the difference between fiberglass and aluminum sided. What does that mean? <clears throat> they'll talk to you about the insulation. They'll tell you about the heated and enclosed underbelly. The extra wide berth that we have here in between our double axles on this. The 14 inch aluminum rims on those Dexter Easy Lube axles. And that extra wide berth that you see right here gives you the stability when going down the road, you won't be rocking it back and forth. I got my Solid step above steps right here. My dual zone speakers, large awning with the LED light strip. My black tank flush right here. Here's my entry point into the master. And check this out, 30 by 20 baggage doors on the pass-through storage. They are magnetic, they are anti-slam. It is finished off. And you can see right here, you got the powered leveling jacks, or excuse me, the powered stabilizer jacks in the front and the rear finished off beautiful kind of looks like a wood cabin in there mini diamond plate fiberglass end cap on this that's painted has that automotive coating on it you got the twin 20s plus the powered tongue jack and led light other side of my pass-through storage my connections my external shower my terminations there's so many features to these rvs that it's mind-boggling but here's the thing if you like the 2900 rl drop me a comment down below rv this one sleep six comes in at 6115 pounds dry 33 feet six inches long and starts at 31995 or as low as seven dollars and 66 cents a day if you say chris that's great but uh we're looking for something else 
We got over 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, 20,000 on the lot, 160 plus RV locations for you to go check out. Just drop fresh down below or text fresh to 46642. We got people standing by who help you find the one that's right for you. But if you're ready to take it easy, we got more as the Ultimate RV Show National Tour continues with those take it easy RVs. Demand for RVs is at historic levels, which is why we are working around the clock to bring you over 80,000 factory fresh RVs. That's the largest selection of RVs in the world, fresh from the factory to our stores, to your driveway or campsite. RVs are made by Americans for Americans. And now you can see America for less. Shop over 80,000 factory fresh RVs, starting at just $5 a day. Click, call, or visit your local Camping World or Gander RV and Outdoors today. You know, honestly, what makes me excited about America's Gunsmith Shop is the people. The team that we have here is the greatest team that I've been a part of in my 30 years here. So America's Gunsmith Shop is in Kenosha, Wisconsin, right in between Milwaukee and Chicago. You know, we're the largest gunsmith shop in the country from both square footage and employees. This is all fairly new facility that we have, new equipment. So we're very excited about what we have here. It's uh, pretty much endless what we're able, uh, capable of being able to do here. From machining to um, reblueing to camo dipping. We can do the restoration. We can do the engraving. Wood refinishing, just general repair. I don't want my gun to look like anyone else's gun. Send it here and we can help you. We're capable of doing just about any, any service. People that come into the store, if they're interested in seeing the shop, we'll bring them back, walk them through, give them a little tour. I just think we have a great group of guys. That's one of the reasons I enjoy coming to work. We all get along well together and we all care very much about the finished product. Every firearm that shows up on our dock is a, is a one of a kind job that's tailored to the customer's individual needs. Granddad's old rifle, you know, we can breathe new life into it and we can honestly make it look like, it, uh, like the day it came out of the factory. Uh, you know, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, if you like. Each job is looked at as an individual. We're working directly with the customer at that point, trying to find out exactly what their needs are, what their wants are. Have all the input in the world. Nothing is done without the owner's consent. You know, no matter where you're located in the country, uh, we can ship you a firearms uh, box. The firearm can go in that box and it gets shipped right to us. We use FedEx. We'll complete the repair and we'll ship that firearm right back to your home. We can be your local gunsmith shop from a thousand miles away. Sooner or later, everyone's bound to encounter someone in need. If you're one of the stopping kind, chances are it was passed down. Hey, Mom. Some good that you observed from early on. Call it going the extra mile or paying it forward. We just call it being good. Spend a lifetime doing good. Thank you. Because the next generation is watching. Don't you just want to get out and just relax and take it easy? Wouldn't that be nice for you and your family? Yes. Hey, what's up? It's Christian. Yes, I'm a little silly, but... Hopefully it's part of my charm. <laughs> At least I hope it is. I am seated in the 24 foot, 10 inch long, 4,700 pound, well, 4,615, uh, four sleeping Keystone Hideout 202 RD. It's all about the take it easy RVs. And when you're talking about rear dining campers, these really fit the bill because this one, for example, doesn't have a slide, um, but it's got a 52 gallon fresh tank and then twin 30s. Gray and black are both 30. Uh, and starting at $21,995 or as low as $5.44 a day. That's a cup of coffee. For a cup of coffee at your favorite upscale, uh, high price inflated coffee joint, which we all go to, um, you could skid out and see the country the safest way possible. Take your loved ones out, go camping, go hiking, go biking, go fishing uh, in your RV. And uh, Keystone is known for quality. Quality construction, they have things like the Key TV multi-source connection. They have the 
colored wires and connectors. So what that means is for the, the pipes and the wires, everything is multicolored so that you can easily find and fix if something does need to be fixed. But with the way Keystone does their manufacturing, with the quality and the attention to detail that they put in things, even you'll see, for example, this wood strip that they have here in the ceilings, over 80 inches of height in here. Um, that's just a little attention to detail, a little thing they didn't need to do just to cover the seam on the ceiling. They spend the time and the effort to give you a quality product because they know that if you have a quality product, you're going to enjoy it. And while you're out enjoying it, you're going to want to get out and enjoy it again. So why not give you something that you can do that with? So this rear dining 202 RD, this is where you have the just hanging out space. I love the rear dinings because, sure, you can sleep four people here. This booth dinette reduces down into a sleeper. This jackknife sofa, the leatherette, which is plush and comfortable. You have the removable armrests. You can use that as a pillow if you want to, is a jackknife. Um, but if you go out with the kids or if you're just a couple and maybe you got the dogs with you, this is where it happens. Look at my giant panoramic windows. Some of the largest in-class windows you're going to find. You pull up to a national park, or you pull up to the lake, or you pull up to Soldier Field to catch the Bears game. This is where it's going to get real. And you go, we are making memories and we're reconnecting and doing something we didn't get a chance to do in 2020 because it stunk. But 2021 is going to be the year of RV travel for us. Entertainment options, you got a little TV backer over here beside my window. I got my TV connections right up there. There's my key TV multi-source connection. Plus I got my power ports. Right above Fritz's head is a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. You got a 30,000 BTU furnace. And since you do have that insulation in here, you're going to be able to keep the temperature where you want it, how you want it. That's what's great about RVs. Plus I got storage underneath my bench seat. So if you need it, you got it on both sides and you got a little bit under the jackknife sofa too. Now, a lot of the manufacturers put these 12 volt fridges in the RVs because they couldn't get the regular gas electric fridges that we've become so accustomed to. But check out the space that we got in this puppy. Because supply and demand, you get an upgraded refrigerator experience. Is that a thing? Yeah, you sure do. Bada bing, bada boom. Plus you need storage. You got plenty of storage space in there. You got pantry. If you want to put your hunting gear, your fishing gear, that's a good spot for it. You got easy to clean, slip resistant flooring. This one even comes with the road vac system. So if you want to do some cleaning, you got your little connector vac right there, cut it on. The hose is underneath in the storage compartment. You can reach pretty much everything in the camper, keep it clean, keep it nice and neat. And that's something that you don't find in a lot of entry level RVs. Our Furion AM FM command center is down here under the solid surface or the press surface countertop, which I'll get to here in a minute. You got HDMI, USB connection plus it's Bluetooth. You can control it from your cell phone. It's dual zone, run the entertainment out. There's my little remote control for it. Got the solid built, solid wood construction on the ball bearing drives. And check out my storage space in this, man. Good spot right there for my trash can or whatever you want to put. Bag back. Uh, if you want to do the grab and go bags, you can get it right there. I got my, my sink right here, which it's kind of like a 60-40 split or 70-30 split, but you can easily clean your pots right here. And backlit frosted glass inlay in my cabinets up above my sink. Check that out. You got the little mushroom light right there, but look how cool that looks. When you cut the lights out in here and you have that set up, it's kind of like your little ambient light. It's actually pretty cool. More storage over here. Solid surface pressed countertops, giving me plenty of prep area. Got my GFCI outlet here, so if I wanted to plug in a coffee station, bam, absolutely could. Glass cover on my flush mounted three burner cooktop. Check out that grill style, great. Rugged looking, and it's easy to move the pots and pans around. Now, what's great about this is if you need the additional prep space, the reason why they flush mounted these is so that you do have that additional prep space. Got my flush mounted Greystone microwave up here, my hood, my backsplash. And Fritz, check out my bathroom. Porcelain bowl with the foot flush. Plenty of countertop space. There is two on my single sink, my mirror, my shower and tub surround. 
the notch, plus I got the fan up there giving me a little bit of additional headroom. But since, I mean, you're looking at over 80 inches of height in here, um, I'm 6'2", I wouldn't really be, cra be crowded in there. Come over here to the master. I got myself a little storage lip up top, a little shelf, mirrored ward storage on both sides. And what I thought was kind of a cool feature, they have a little laundry chute. So if you want to throw a basket down there in the pass-through storage, and let's say you want to go hiking, biking, whatever, and you got your dirty clothes, bam, just drop it in there, close the latch, you got yourself a nice little neat laundry chute. You also got storage underneath the bed here. There's the hose that I was talking about for the road vac. Just a nice feature to have, man, making life clean, you know, if you want to, or making it easy to clean. Plus I got my cross windows here for my breeze and my light and my LCD TV mount, my bracket, if I want to put that in there, my cable connection, my power, and right up top here on the ceiling is my little wine guard. So a lot of RVs these days that you're seeing come pre-wired for Wi-Fi and 4G LTE uh, boost extension. Sign up for that service, get it. So if you need to stay connected on the road, you absolutely can. But when you just want to take it easy, get out and about, see America the safest way possible. I mean, you're looking at a chance to sleep for people starting at $21,995 or as low as $5.44 a day. Where can you go get a hotel room with all this stuff, a kitchenette, bath, shower, and tub, dinette, for as little as $5.44 a day? I'll wait. You can't. But you can with your RV. Plus, you don't have to worry about setting up travel arrangements, getting on a plane, getting a hotel room that you don't know who's been in there. This is your RV, your safety, your security, your getaway, your vacation. <laughs> you owe it to yourself. If you say, Chris, I like this 202 RD, it can sleep for 4,700 pounds. I can tow that with my SUV, 24 feet, 10 inches long. How do I get it? Just drop me a comment down below, RV or text RV to 46642. Now I'm gonna step on the solid step over steps coming outside. You'll see this is an aluminum sided RV, but we do have that automotive coating on the paneling there, which means it's gonna be a little bit more UV resistant and the graphics aren't gonna fade as much. You're gonna be able to extend your camping season with this. We got that beautiful TPO roof up there. It's an Alpha Superflex roof. What does that mean? Well, Alpha being top, because it's also on the top of the RV, but it's top of the line. More durable, lasts longer, easier and rugged, easier to clean and more rugged. Sealed safety glass all the way around. I got the backlighting on my speakers and the LED light strip under my awning right there. This is a double axle and you'll see, we got the Dexter Easy Lube axles there. Got the little extra wide berth there. I got my automotive dressing right there too, which kind of, you know, if you notice that it bounces back and forth, that's when you're going down the road, it's not as rigid. It's not gonna psh, crack and break on you. External entertainment, got my cable and my power right here. My scissor jacks, both on the front and the back. And speaking of the back, check me out. Four by four sewer hose storage here, spare tire mount. Those arch ceilings that we saw on the inside, the barrel ceilings, that on the top, having that really makes the elements, the rain and the snow, stay off the top of the RV. And those three inch rubber nozzles, make sure it's not gonna fall on you. And you saw how much room we had on the inside. I mean, both Fritz and I were in there and he's got a big camera rig. This is a slideless RV, plenty of room. Four by four sewer row storage there. It's my 30 amp plug, which reels back in. My main termination's right here. My sewer outlet connection, my gray and black tanks city water connection. The other side, I'm gonna pass through storage and we'll finish over there. Diamond plated rock guard, twin 20, 20 pound LP tanks, powered tongue jack with the LED security light. And you got that welded aluminum frame on there that is so strong, so supportive. They have done such a good job really upgrading a lot of how the manufacturing's done, but the parts that they use to do the manufacturing especially these I-beams, because they're more sturdy, they're more rugged. And over here, my pass-through storage. Finished off, good space for the beach equipment, if you want to take it in there, the towels, the whatever you want to do. Look, it's about just taking it easy in your RV. Whether you're a couple or you're a small family, if you're looking for something lightweight, this is 4,600 pounds dry, 4,614. Can sleep four people, 24 feet, 10 inches long, 
for as low as $21,995, starting at $21,995 or as low as $5.44 a day. That's something you can't beat, man. So if you want to jump on that, do it now, because the Ultimate RV Show pricing isn't going to last forever. Drop us a comment down below, RV, or text RV to 46642. Now, if you say, Chris, you got 80,000 factory fresh RVs coming, there's probably something in there that I need because we need bunks, we need whatever. Over 160 locations, people standing by right now to help you find the one that's right for you. Drop fresh down below or text fresh to 46642. They'll walk you through the process and get the RV that's right for you. Now. If you want to go to the competition, because, you know, we do have a lot of shows going on right now, that's absolutely fine. You know, you can put an ejector seat in a helicopter. That's, you know, fine, too. To me, that's yin and that's yang to that problem. But if you give me a chance to beat it, I'll beat that deal guaranteed. Or I'll give you a 1000 bucks in cash. Just text BEAT to 46642. Drop me a comment down below. BEAT. Enjoy the Ultimate RV Show National Tour. We're going to continue with more great stuff next. Appreciate you so much, Chris, Mr. Young there. And uh, you know what time it is. Time for another ultimate giveaway if you're not registered. Mm -hmm. How do you register? It's quite simple. And again, once you register, guys, you're registered for the whole uh, RV show. Yeah, I know. Set. They got this week and next week to do it. All they got to do is text URVS246642. They haven't done it yet. I am disappointed. All right. We're not just standing here with this scooter for good looks. Yeah, we're this giving the scooter away. It's yeah. like, here's a $1,000 scooter just like that, and who's our winner? Our winner is, let me see any, Eric Roosh. Woo! Wow. Congratulations. Eric. Fancy 49cc scooter from, uh, from Coleman. Oh, my gosh. Eric, this is just this one awesome. of many giveaways that we're going to be doing mm -hmm. over the next few days and the few weeks. So, again, you are VS to 46642. It's that simple. Yep. You could win yourself this scooter. We're going to take a look at the Thor Coleman now, I love this 30-footer. Me too. Well, I think that we should check it out right now. The next one we have is the Thor Coleman 30CM. And folks, definitely a different layout in here. As you can see, we still have two slides really helping to open this space up. But one of them is here in the living space. The other one has bunks. The great thing about this is you have those dedicated sleeping places. So if you're looking for something where, you know, you don't necessarily have to break down the dinette or the uh, sofa here, then this is a great option. Now, bear in mind, if you do want to do that, this one can sleep up to eight people. So if you have a lot of people that are coming with you, this is a great one for it. You can obviously have legal riders here in the dinette as well as in the sofa. Now, a couple things I really like. Uh, one of them is going to be they went two-tone on the fabric. I think that was a good choice, or uh, I shouldn't say fabric. It's more of a... Um, Oh, what do you want to call it? Like a synthetic leatherette, if you will. Uh, but the great thing about that is it helps break up the look a little bit, and it's still that same leatherette on the bottom, meaning that it's going to clean up nice and easy. And I don't know about your kids, folks, but mine sometimes make a mess when they eat. Uh, the other day, <laughs> the other day uh, my daughter was legitimately shoveling quinoa into her mouth from her plate with a fork. And I'm like, what, what are you doing? And of course, you know, it's quinoa. So it's just all over her, all over the floor, all over everywhere. But with this, it's easy to clean up, right? So, so that's a, a great thing. Um, also, plenty of space here for four people, which I like. So, you know, if you wanna have a family meal together, you have the capability to do that. Plenty of cup holders right there. This is a dream style dinette. And what that means is it's very easy to drop down into a bed. So there's this lever right here. And all you have to do is flip that lever and you, this will push right down. Now, you will want to lift these cushions up so that this can push down onto these rails here, uh, but you drop that down and that's how you turn it into a bed. It is, very, honestly, very simple. Uh, and then to lock it back in place, you just find that lever again. There it is. Lock that right back into place here. Um, if we take a look, you'll see the big window. The thing I like about that is it gives you a view out to your campsite. Another thing I want to touch on is this right here. The fact they put USB ports up here. And I may be saying, why is that important? Well, what a lot of people don't think about or, or you know, don't realize is that when you're traveling, uh, most of the time you don't have a 120, right? Which will be your standard electrical outlets. Unless you have an inverter, that is dedicated uh, for the coach that is actually powering those, then you're not gonna have 120. So if you need to charge a phone, you're gonna wanna use something like this, which is your USB ports, because that runs off 12 volts. So you can plug everything in right there. You'll still be able to use your phone. So for these passengers here, um, you know, or, or these people over here, you can see you have another one there, right? You can still charge in, you can still charge your phone while you're traveling down the road, which a lot of times, again, will help make that travel experience a little more enjoyable. 
And you want to talk about big storage, you have huge storage right up top. I mean, both of these, you know, strut supported, easy one hand operation. You can see your privacy curtain right there, which goes across the front. So that way you don't get any, uh, you know, anyone uh, peeking in at night, right? So if you want some privacy, you can put that up. You'll also see this here. This will be your, uh, I don't know what the proper term for it is. I'm going to call it an HDMI router, right? Which it will let you hook up all your different um, you, you know, the TV and any other supporting things you want to put in there, like DVD players, stuff like that. Everything plugs right into there, makes it nice and simple to switch from one to the other. HDMI switcher? I don't know. It's something like that. Anyway, um, splitter? I think it's an HDMI splitter. That's what it is. Uh, right up top here is your TV. That is on a swing arm mount, so that can swing out and around. So you're sitting at the dinette, sitting on the sofa, cooking in the kitchen. You still have a great view to it. Now, we just talked a little bit ago about the Forrester and Max load capacity, right? And I said, you know, maybe you want something a little bit heavier. Well, this right here is exactly that. Folks, with this one, you have 800 pound weight capacity. So if you want something that's a little bit beefier, you know, maybe 450 is a little scary. Maybe you plan on using this for a lot of storage and you're gonna put a lot of things up there, right? You know, you get to your destination, you wanna put stuff up here and out of the way, close the curtain off so people can't see what's up there. Then you're gonna want something that, can, that will be able to support it better. 800 pounds is gonna let you do that. And the great thing about it is we have very similar price points, folks. Again, this one's starting a little over 20 bucks a day, starting at 101, 995. So if you're interested, all you have to do is for this specific one is text the word RV to that 46642. Or again, if you know maybe you see some things here, you like the heavier bunk rating or the uh, heavier cab over bunk rating, but you don't want bunks in your class C, no problem. Just text that word fresh to that 46642. Let us show you the different options available and make sure we find the perfect motorhome for you and your needs. Now, we talk about having two slide outs. This right here is one of them, which is what helps open this space up. This, of course, does come in. It still allows full walkway all the way through that's important to mention both of these we talk about uh, we talked about today both the Forester and this Coleman 30 cm when everything's closed up you can still access the fridge you can still access the bathroom you get that full walkway from the front of the rv uh, front all the way to the back so the jackknife sofa also drops down into a bed which is what helps this one sleep eight there are two additional seat belts underneath and again cup holders right there storage all the way across the top you can see that once again you still have strut supported so it's that simple one hand operation a couple more right here and i like they went with a frosted glass helping to break up the wood look a little bit underneath now you know again different style countertop you, we talked about the forester having true solid surface this one has more of a pseudo solid surface it's a little bit lighter weight um, and, and, you know, it saves a little bit of money, right? Both for the manufacturer and more importantly for you to help keep that price point a little bit lower. Now, the great thing about it is it definitely is a huge upgrade over T-Mold, right? You don't have to worry about your T-Mold or anything popping off or water getting down in there and rotting out your countertop. And it also allows you to undermount the sink. So a lot of people really like this style of countertop. You also see the high-rise pull-out faucet there. And over in the corner is your power tower plus your spice rack right next to that. And additional prep space right over here to the side. Three burner recessed cooktop with your glass cover oven underneath if you want to do a little bit of baking and you also have storage right there for your pots and pans. Plus underneath the sink, one of my favorite things manufacturers do is give you a spot for a trash can because I hate, hate, hate having to take my trash bag and tie it to a pole and it's hanging out and it's smelling and it's stinking and it's leaking on the floor. I want it tucked away in a trash can that I can easily take out and easily access when I'm cooking in the kitchen. Fridge freezer combo. This one does run off both propane and electric. And, you know, again, so we talk about differences between what we have here and the Forester. So with the propane refrigerator, it's not going to cool down as quick, right? You're going to want to uh, start this uh, the night before you go camping to help it cool down. The advantage, it doesn't matter where you're at. As long as you have propane, this will work, right? The other one, with the, it's not going to run down your batteries or anything like that. You don't have to worry about solar like you would with the other one. Uh, so there's definitely some advantages on that side. And folks, anytime you talk about anything in RVs, right, nothing is single-handedly going to beat out something else. There's always advantages and disadvantages to, to different sides of it, which is why they have different items. Now, the, the one advantage may just be the fact it's less expensive, but that can be a good thing. If you're looking to stay within a budget, going with a less expensive option isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? So just keep that in mind. There's never one option that's always better than the other. 
Right over here in the side is our bunk. So you'll see the top bunk there. Right underneath, you have the extra dinette. So uh, this, of course, does flip up and lock up into place. So you have headroom wire there. This obviously drops down into a bed as well to give you that second bed. And one of the things they changed this year is they went from having a uh, TV with a DVD player to a tablet holder. And uh, at first glance, you know, people may not like that, but what they did is they actually reached out and they found out that most people weren't using the TV and DVD players, right? Most of the time, the kids were playing on their tablets. And they're like, okay, well, you know, why are we charging the customer you know, an extra $400 for these two TV and DVD players when we can save them a little bit of money by putting something like this in that chances are they will get more use out of. And that's exactly what Thor did. And I personally think it was a smart move, helped save a little bit of money for you. Making our way into the bathroom, show you this guy real quick. Porcelain bowl, of course, makes it easy to clean. So that way it'll stay uh, looking nicer, longer. You know, it's kind of elevated, makes it easier to get up off, uh, up off of. So if you have bad knees or, you know, maybe you just had a really hard leg day at the gym, that, of course, does make life a little easier on you. Stepping into the shower, I have the skylight there, folks. I can probably, I mean, I'm six foot tall. You know, I currently weigh about 207 after a beer or two last night, maybe 208, 209, but uh, you can see right here with that skylight, I can be, you know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and still be able to stand in there without having to duck down, which is pretty great. Making our way to the very back, just wanna show you some of the features in the bedroom before we go outside. You'll see wardrobe right here, a spot for a TV. I'll lift this up so you can see there's also plenty of space right in the back here if you have any extra components you wanna put in there. Plenty of drawer space all the way down, and then right over to this side is our bed. Now, you'll notice you have, again, more storage space, plus on both sides you have nightstands, electrical outlets, USB ports, 12-volt ports. If you need to plug anything in, whether it's a phone, it's a tablet, it's a CPAP machine, you have to run oxygen when you sleep. Folks, you're going to be good to go here. You have the plugins there. And because this is a Class C, one other great thing about Class Cs is they'll have a generator on board. You have a 4,000-watt Cummins Onan generator. So no matter where you're at, if you want to be able to watch TV, you know, you need to, to run the AC, you can turn that generator on, and as long as you have fuel, you'll be good to go. Making our way outside. Some quick features here. Let's come on up front. So, you, again, you want to talk about some differences, right? So right here, you will see that it's more of a three-quarter front cap instead of a full cap. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you have the front cap look, and it still adds a little bit of insulation, but your seam is still up front. It doesn't come around to the side like we had on the Forester. So if that's something important to you, again, folks, we're here. We're here to help you out. We're here to help you navigate to make sure we find the perfect Class C for you. The mirrors extend out to the side, you know, so you can see beyond the, uh, beyond the side of the coach. You'll see right here is your TV as well as your speaker there. So if you want to sit out here and, uh, you know, set up a bunch of chairs, rock out, watch some TV, you have the ability to do that. More storage all the way down and around, plus additional storage right back here. Uh, if we come around to the back, one of the big things about the, the Coleman line Underneath, folks, this is an 8,000 pound hitch. Most people that have Class Cs, especially a little bit larger ones, and, and even some of the smaller ones, will have what they call a towed or a towed vehicle behind them. And the reason being is it sometimes can be a little inconvenient to have to uh, constantly disconnect and reconnect to your campsite. So having another vehicle makes it a little easier to get around town. With an 8,000 pound hitch, that gives you a broader availability of options for vehicles that you can tow. So, you know, even if you're towing a truck behind you, you have the ability to do it. Another thing I want to point out on this one is this massive storage right over here. You will see it's just huge storage right in there. Um, and, you know, this one has an automatic transfer switch. It's something that we can't see here, but you don't have to worry about a Slater box. So what that means is if you're going from, you know, shore power to generator power or vice versa, it automatically transfers for you. You don't have to take a plug and plug it back into the RV, which on some Class Cs, you have to do that. And if you don't, your generator is not powering your batteries back up. And then you have dead batteries and all sorts of issues. But, folks, again, that is what we are here for. And all you need to do is text the word FRESH to 46642 or drop that word FRESH in the comment section below that will let us reach out to you and help you navigate through the perfect class c for you one of the things ian if you're going to be in a class c or any of the rv vehicles mm -hmm. outside uh, or that you take on the road with you is you want to have 
the confidence of knowing that you're taken care of when you're on the road, especially with yep. your family. I'm here with the Jurgies, Sean Absolutely. Parr. We're going to talk about the Good Sam Club because when you're a member of Good Sam and you have this membership and this knowledge that you're safe and secure, that your vehicle, if it breaks down, is going to be taken care of, that's a lot to say when you're towing your family with you. Absolutely. Huge. It's a huge relief, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and it's something you don't realize until you have the comfort sometimes as well. It's like, oh, man, no stress. Just knowing that you're taken care of in, in many ways at Good Sam. Especially even driving here during this winter vortex. We were like, oh, man, if, <laughs> if anything happens, at least we can call Good Sam. And for the, you know, roadside assistance, they can cover your, tr you know, our travel trailer and our SUV, you know, our truck and our family. So we're covered. We're good. No yeah, problems. One of the cool things about it is, like, you guys are driving this beautiful Ford. You're towing mm -hmm. your fifth wheel, and something breaks down on the, the Ford truck. That's yep. also covered in this program. Absolutely. And, you know, if it's a, a big issue that they're going to take a few days, you guys got to get put up in a hotel. You get reimbursed. That's all part of the Good Sam program. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So they if it's 100 miles within your home, they will reimburse up to $1,200 until your car is fixed. Which is pretty amazing. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So for us, if something were to happen, like I said, up here, we could have gone to a hotel, had our meals covered, no problem, no stress. And you know what I love, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time, I call this the Good Sam Bible because I get so <laughs> lost in here. It's like I'm on TikTok sometimes. I get lost in all the videos for like two or three hours. When I pull this book out, first of all, it's filled with discounts. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, where do I want to go? My wife and I are going to plan a trip. And when you open it up, it's like, oh, we're going to Colorado. It shows you everything, every campground. And by the way, mm -hmm. there are over 2,100 campgrounds in here to show you exactly where you need to go and what you're going to save when you get there. Absolutely. So if you're a full-time RVer like us or you're like a vivid weekend warrior, if you don't have good Sam, you're missing out. Yeah, plus the you discounts. Are. Let's not forget. And you know, we are all about the discounts. All about it. For instance, <laughs> we just gave away that scooter, right? Uh -huh. And if you are a, a member of Good Sam, it's not going to cost you $1,000. It's going to cost you $900. You're going to save $100. Yeah. And that pays for three years of being a Good Sam member, just like that yeah. with membership starting at just $29 a year. It's true. You know, we got into the RV life and that type of travel because we wanted to have an enjoyable experience. In the beginning, I think we still had all these stresses. We were always like, worried about a lot of things, but now having this, there's a comfort. We didn't have it in the beginning, but we do now, and it makes a big difference for the overall feel of the travel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good, good Sam discounts are what it's all about. Safe, secure, knowing you have that right in your back pocket all the time when you're traveling is what it's all about. Become a member of Good Sam today. When we start getting into Class C's with two slides, they're going to be a little bit bigger. And there's no exception here, folks. We're looking at a 32-foot Class C. You have both slides on the same side, which dramatically open up this space, giving you a ton of room. And one of my favorite things about this one is not only can you carry seven, but you can also sleep seven. Folks, this big beauty is the 2021 Forrester Classic 3041. And as you can see, it has great seating space. One of the big things, one of the big reasons people love motorhomes in general, especially Class C's. One, they're a little more affordable. I mean, this one's starting at a little over 20 bucks a day. Uh, but the great thing about it is you have the seating space. So you can have two people hanging out. Both people are buckled in. They're riding safely. And I don't know about you, but if I'm going to go across country, I can't think of a more comfortable place to be right here. You know, just kicking back, relaxing. I have some cup holders for beverages. I have armrests directly across from me. I have anyone else that's riding, right? We can have three additional riders right there. So, you know, you have that conversation. You can play those games, have a lot of fun. The table's there. When the slide is in, it's nice and close. So if you want to play a card game or something, you have the capability to do that too. Plus, you still have the ability to talk with the passenger and driver. And, and again, that's the great thing about a motorhome is it's all about the experience. Experience. It's about the travel of getting there. Uh, with this one, as I said, the, the theater seats I just absolutely love. This, of course, can fold up like so if you just want it to be a sofa. So, you know, if you want to sit here or lay down, uh, you, you have that ability too. Uh, and then if we take a look, let's see if we can take a look underneath here, you can see that you get good storage. So you want to talk about some extra storage space, you have it tucked away right underneath there. If you want to drop this one down, you know, into a, into like a sleeping position, um, you know, you can do that too. It is still a jackknife sofa. It's, it's not a huge bed, but you know, it does the trick in a pinch. Another thing I really like about the Forester is right in the back here, these MCD shades. Most manufacturers will use black, sometimes beige. They went with a pattern on here, and it's the first time I've really seen a manufacturer do that. 
but I like it. It adds a little something, you know? It's it's not uh, so dark, you know, like when it's black and, and you shut it down where it starts to feel closed in at night, but it's not so bright that it's going to get super dirty quickly either, so I think they did a, a good job there. It's a nice mix. Great storage all the way throughout this one, both inside and outside. You can see that right up top, right? Great storage all the way along the top. We'll see plenty more when we head outside. Up front is the cab over. So uh, with this one, again, a great sleeping spot. You have an extra ladder there so you can quickly and easily climb up in here. Now this one doesn't have quite as much uh, or quite as high of capacity as some of the other ones we've seen in the show, right? You're looking at 440 pound weight capacity. Now, that's still significant. That's still pretty good. Uh, you know, for most of the time, it'll be able to sleep one to two people up here, no problem. But if you are looking for something with a little bit more, right? A little bit heavier load capacity, that's not a problem. We have them. Uh, as we've been telling you, you know, during the whole show, folks, we have over 80,000 pieces on order. We have over 20,000 in stock now. All you have to do is text the word FRESH to that 46642 number, be able to take advantage of that. And again, we can help walk you through. If you want something with a higher load capacity up here, we have class C's in stock that definitely will meet that for you. Uh, but taking a look at the rest of it here, you, you'll notice that you have storage, right? You can just lift that up, super convenient, kind of tucks itself away. You have some cup holders up there. Uh, TV over on this side, that's just going to be a swing arm. You have your screen right up front there. There's a privacy screen for the front. And if we drop down, you'll take a look at the, at the uh, cab here. So you can see the center dash is nice and big. You have that Sony touchscreen right there, the cup holders all around. The seats as well are like a leatherette, right, instead of a cloth. So upgraded seat covers on there, making sure that it will, uh, you know, stay looking nice and have the longevity that you expect when you're, you know, buying a, a little bit higher end Class C. And we talk about storage. Again, same thing on this slide out. The entire thing is all storage. Easy access. You can see you have hidden hinges and it's just one hand, right? You know, I can just use one hand and I can get up there and reach whatever I want. It actually holds itself up there. So that way I don't have to hold it up with one arm while trying to reach in there with the other. No one wants to have to do that dance. Closes nice and softly, just like so. You have the big U-shaped dinette. And again, it's an excellent spot to ride. A great spot to sit down, enjoy meals together. The table here does drop down if you want to have that additional sleeping space. Again, seatbelts on both sides plus one in the back. And that's not always the case. This seatbelt right here, a lot of manufacturers won't put a, a seatbelt there. It's not rated for it. Uh, but if some manufacturers go the extra length, make sure that you know whoever is sitting there is going to be safe and it allows for an extra seatbelt, which is what gives you the seven passengers in this particular model. If we take a look at the storage underneath, look at that and how easy to access that is. Just pull that guy open. You don't have to get down on your hands and knees. I love when manufacturers make things easier, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but I like when things are easier, especially when I'm camping, and that definitely is uh, one of those things that help. Beautiful kitchen, true solid surface in here, folks. So many manufacturers are going away, going to more of like a faux solid surface, um, you know, because it's a little bit less expensive and still gives you the undermount sink. But a true solid surface is great, definitely more durable. Plus, it looks nicer. You have the pop up countertop extension right here. Wireless charger, so you can just take your phone, throw it right there, and it will charge. You can see the high rise pull out faucet. You'll also notice the sink top covers, take those off. Of course, undermount double bowl stainless steel sink. Something else that's pretty neat, and we'll see this when we go outside, is that this one has a trash chute. And what I mean by that is right here, you can lift this up, your trash can is right there, and it's easy to easy to access, because rather than having to you know take the trash bag out in here, you can just go right around to the outside, take your trash out, dump it, and you're not getting, you know, not dripping stuff all the way through that bacon grease that you threw in there that somehow tipped over, right? It's not uh, leaving little droplets of grease all over the floor that just slip on and fall and break your neck. And right here, it's nice and easy, just take it outside, good to go. Three burner cooktop over to the side. The knobs light up. It's a magic chef. You can just pop that guy up like so. Got that glass backdrop there, so it makes it nice and easy to clean. Plus, this backsplash and the side splash here too, which I like that they put this on here. A lot of manufacturers don't. And the fact that it doesn't have too much design to it uh, as far as, um, I guess, texture, right? Means that it, it will be easier to clean than a lot of the other ones that are out there. Again, storage underneath the sink. Plus, you have your convection microwave oven. So it's your oven, it's your microwave, all in one, doing a great job to save space. If we flip it around real quick, right here is your Magic Chef 12-volt 
uh, compressor driven refrigerator does a great job of keeping things nice and cool cools down quickly not like uh, your standard propane refrigerators where you have to cool them down overnight this one will be cool in a couple hours you'll also see the one control system here so if we turn that on you can see control all your lights and everything right from that panel it does make it very simple and easy and plus it looks much cleaner you'll see over to this side you have a pantry take a look at that folks you want to talk about great hidden storage that one right there is it i love that built-in pantry you have the fan right up top so you know again if you want to quickly get some smells out of here or maybe you know it, you're uh whatever else right maybe it's you just need to change the temperature you don't want to run the ac just want to open up some windows and turn that on that'll get you some airflow this one does have a pass-through bathroom, and for some people, that is a, a make or break. Now, bear in mind, when I say pass-through bathroom, the only thing that you really are passing through is the sink. Okay, over to the side, they have the toilet and the shower. So if you need to use those, right, they'll be right here. So you have your own little, you know, your own little cubby hole, your own little place right there. So if you have to use the bathroom, it's not going to be disturbing anyone. So while technically, yes, it is a pass-through bathroom, it's uh, probably one of the better ones, in my opinion, for exactly that reason, because you have a privacy curtain right here and you can close that off. So if someone needs to come and use the bathroom, they have full access to it. And again, if you need to use it, you're good to go. The only thing you'd have to pass through is the sink. And you'll notice how big the countertops on, are on here. That's a big one for me too. Great storage there. Uh, you can see right up top, Medicine cabinet is recessed, which is pretty cool. You know, that way it's not sticking out. Uh, they give it a really good look. You can, of course, have the uh, mirror there. Storage all below that. And then in the back is our slide-out bed. This, of course, is a split cushion because it's a slide-out. You have to have some kind of way to make it fold up. Storage across the top, reading lights. You have your, your uh, nightstands there, right, are high. I like that they elevated them so that way you're not rolling into in the middle of the night. Some cup holders there, too, if you want, like, a little bottle of water or something like that at night. An additional max air fan, again, for that uh, flow. You will see here is your TV. So if you want to watch TV before bed, you have one here in the bedroom. And one of my favorite parts is right back here. Kevin, if you're able to squeeze in there and kind of show everyone, you get this giant walk-in closet and you have all this storage on both sides. I mean, you want to talk about a class C you can spend some time in, folks. This right here is it. Now, you know, it may not have bunks, but again, you can still sleep a ton of people in here. You can have a ton of clothes, whether it's just the two of you or if it's the whole family, you have the ability to uh, be able to go out and camp for a longer period of time. So again, folks, you know, this is just one of the several class C's we have available. If this is the one for you, if you're like, Ian, this is it, you're going to want to text the word RV to that 46642 or put RV in the comments below. Because as I said, folks, this one is starting for a little over 20 bucks a day. Let's go take a quick look at some of the outside features because when it comes to the Forester, right, while there's great inside features, there's a lot on the outside I want to hit too. So as we make our way right outside, a couple different things. One I want to talk about is that Solera awning. Cool thing about this is it has the speakers built into the heads and it's an easy pitch, right? You can just kind of lower this down, just pull it down and adjust the pitch on one side of the both and it has the LED lights on there. This one, of course, is built on the Ford E450. It's a, it's a bigger motorhome. It's going to have to be on a bigger chassis. Front cap up front, that's going to help from any, uh, prevent any water penetration because the seal is moved back to the side. So any of that driving wind, that, that rain, isn't going to get in here. So uh, much less chance for any kind of leaks, which, again, if you're looking to keep something for a number of years, that will certainly help. Another huge factor that will help with that is full body paint, folks. Beautiful paint scheme on here. You know, you don't have to worry about graphics or anything peeling off all full body paint. It's, uh, you know, again, your, your coach will look the same in 15 years as it does right now. It'll be absolutely gorgeous. Outside TV right there if you want to watch TV. Storage galore. You'll also notice your cameras. This one has side-mounted cameras, so you can flip on the blinker, be able to see right down the side. It also has the easy ride suspension, which consists of your ride right air springs. It also has your Hellwig sway control and your Bilstein uh, shocks built in. So between all of those, you are getting an awesome ride going down the road. And if you take a look right in here, you can see that ride right system. That's where you're going to adjust it. Also in here is your uh, whole house 
filter, nice and easy to access, easy to change out. Folks, I'm telling you, this thing is absolutely killer. But again, this is just one of many Class Cs we have available. If you want to see more, all you have to do is text that word FRESH to 46642. They say life is about the little things, those moments we unplug, packing up the camper after a long week, making room for new memories. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. If you've wandered the mountains, or ridden a trail, if you've discovered beauty that's left you speechless, or laughed like you haven't laughed in years, if the food tastes remarkably better, and the friendship is somehow deeper, you've probably been camping. You and me were meant to be in the great outdoors forever. It's the best America has to offer, and it's meant to be shared. RVing is for everyone. Every chef knows that travel and food go hand in hand. If you want to try new recipes, find the best restaurants, and discover amazing cuisines, then make Camping World the first stop on your culinary adventure. If you can make it in a kitchen, on a grill, or over a fire, then you can make it anywhere with your RV. Take your kitchen on the road with Camping World. I'm Craig. I'm Karen. I'm Brianna. I'm Carson. I'm Malia. And I'm Knox. And we have been traveling full time on the road for how long, Malia? Over six years. Would you guys recommend for other families, parents out there with kids watching, that they should take their kids on either an RV adventure or travel full time in their RV? Yeah. Yeah, you would? You'd recommend it? Yeah. All right, awesome. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to let the kids run off. We've got neighbors parked next to us with kids, so they're going to run off to play with them. And then Craig and I will stick around, and we'll share with you guys tons more information on this whole crazy RV lifestyle. All right, so now the kids are settled, they're all playing, so we are going to jump in to share some more about us. Mm -hmm. So just over six years ago, it was actually May 2014 that we launched. Uh, I came home one day after Brianna spending uh, the day with her sister, and all of a sudden we were going to sell our house and move full-time into an RV. It's like, whoa, <laughs> well, how did that happen? You didn't know that was going to happen when I became a stay-at-home mom with four little kids. So. Yeah. <laughs> But no, we were living the American dream. We had built the house we thought we were gonna be in for the next 30 years. And then we just kind of started to feel trapped. Like we had so much stuff. And we had this beautiful house where we had this mortgage. Craig only got a couple weeks of vacation a year. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to do more. So what other option but RV travel, yeah. which was perfect. It meant we could have a home on wheels, so still give our kids that stability, yet get out and travel a lot, bring our dogs with us, and really just explore this beautiful country that we live in. Yeah, and we also had the intention of homeschooling our kids from day one. Yeah, so they've always been homeschooled. We weren't tied to a school structure, or um, I was in the tech field, so I had some options as far as working remotely. Um, so we had some options as far as not being tied to a location. Yeah, so that definitely played into it. But looking back now, I still can't believe we actually made the leap. So if you're thinking about doing this and you're scared, that's normal. Totally normal. Totally normal. It's totally okay. But what comes on the other side of fear is usually some really amazing things. So we are glad we did it and we made the leap. So we really just love the fact that in an RV, you have your home on wheels. 
So for the kids, like people, what about stability for the kids? Well, they have their own bed, they can decorate their own space. We have our kitchen, we have our living room, we have our room, like it is a very homey feel to it. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the road, we have days that we just hang out inside here and it just feels like you're hanging out inside like a tiny house, like mm -hmm. a small house. Yeah, so no matter where we are, you come back inside and it's just like you've never left, so. Yeah, so we love, but yeah. It's a very stable feeling. It is, and yet we love that our backyard changes. We also love just the options it gives you when you're out exploring. So you can stay in Yellowstone National Park for way cheaper than you could stay at Yellowstone Hotel. And you're also like out in nature. So when you're there, like you open your door and you're like in Yellowstone, like it's amazing. Plus we love boondocking, mm -hmm. which what boondocking means is you drive up into some open field like called BLM land and you just park your rig and you stay there. It's just this wide open space, like mm -hmm. no one's there. And it's just you, your beautiful rig though. So we have a kitchen and bathrooms and showers and all of that. Yeah, we're just in the middle of nowhere in this just gorgeous places. Mm -hmm. So we love the fact that it gives you that capability. Plus, if you don't like a place you're at, guess what? You hook up and you leave and you move on to the next place. Go find somewhere else. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the other thing that's really cool about RVing is that the journey is part of the, the trip. I mean, it's like you, you drive across country and you see a lot more than you would if you flew from point A to point B. So we found some of the really coolest places that you know we would have never stopped at. Um, just because we are RVing. Like we had some more time to do it, uh, we had a stop or whatever it was and we found some really neat places. So the other thing that's really cool about it is the RV community itself. Um, we've met some amazing families and friends that you stay with them for literally like a day or two and you become lifelong friends. It's really cool. And like they're so helpful because a lot of things go wrong when you're on the road. Um, that's that's just a given, like it happens. Um, and usually people are there to help and get it figured out and get you fixed up and back on the road. So community's awesome, yes. um, even for the kids too, especially for the kids, they love it because they're meeting new kids all over the country. Yeah, and the RV campgrounds are definitely more like the old school neighborhoods. You know, back in like the 80s when we would just run around the neighborhood barefoot and you'd be, you know, get out in the morning, run out the door and you wouldn't come back till night. That's what campgrounds are like. And we love that idea that our kids are getting like this type of a childhood because in neighborhoods like we don't see that quite as much mm -hmm. so it's awesome that in campgrounds you get to have that experience even if you're just going out for a weekend or just going for a week like you go and stay in a campground I can almost guarantee there will be other kids there and your kids will just be out playing and just enjoying themselves and that means that then you can maybe have a happy hour around the campfire with their parents and meet some new people as well mm -hmm. and everyone's outside which always to us especially with everything going on right now has been important we're outside so it's fresh air you can easily social distance you don't have to invite people into your RV you can enjoy it right outside around the campfire you can also take days where you just go out with just your family and explore so lots of great things about RVing so obviously if you can't tell we love it mm -hmm. we're still doing it six years later so there must be something about it right yeah right. <laughs> so if you're considering this lifestyle or if you're just considering buying an RV to use it as a way to travel go for it we promise it will be an amazing adventure it'll have its ups and downs <laughs> yep. but it will be an amazing adventure Welcome back everyone to week eight of the Ultimate RV Show National Tour. I'm Ian Baker, joined today by Nelly, and mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite parts of, of the show. It's one of my favorite parts of the week, kind of winding down the day, but we get to talk to people, much like yourself, Nelly, that are out there living the lifestyle, really just kind of living the dream and what RVing is all about. You know, I love the RV community just for this reason. We're a tight-knit bunch, and we help each other, we share knowledge with each other, and it's so fun. So I'm excited to be doing this today. Yeah, absolutely. So joining us today, we have Crazy Family Adventure, who <laughs> has been living out on the road for nearly seven years. Craig, Brianna, welcome, guys. I think that's a world record, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, there's others that have been out way longer than us, but <laughs> no, we're excited to be here. Looking forward to chatting with you guys. <laughs> we're, uh, awesome. you know, I don't know about you guys now. We're in, we're in Kansas currently and it's a little chilly. Where, where are you guys at? You finding warmer weather? No, we are <laughs> in Texas, way down south in Texas, and they haven't had it this cold in like a hundred some years or something. Oh my goodness. <laughs> is, there, is there any part in the States that's warm? What was that, Craig? Sorry. Uh, I was going to say we're as far south as you can get in Texas. Like we're just across the border of Mexico and it's like turtles are freezing. They're just <laughs> washing up on the shore. Oh it's no. Crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So That's to answer crazy. your question, Nelly, I don't think there is. No? I, th I think it's cold everywhere right <laughs> I now. I think you're right. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Well, Craig, Brianna, tell me guys, how, how, I mean, you've been out there, been living on the road for, you know, six, going on seven years. Wow. How, how'd you guys get your start? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always get that uh, question asked and there definitely for us was not like a big aha moment. That was like, oh, we need to go do this now because it really was kind of a, uh, just seeing other people out there living this life. And at the time there wasn't that many, but there were people out there doing it. And like Craig was working the nine to five job. We had built like the American dream, had a big house we built, four kids, two dogs, the picket fence, you know, the whole deal. And it was kind of just at a point where like, we want to do more. We want to travel more. We want to see more. We knew we were going to homeschool our kids. So we saw people out there doing this and we were just like, you know what? why not? Let's do that. Let's go for it and see what this lifestyle is all about. And if we don't like it, we can always come back to live a normal, you know, life again. <laughs> so that was basically what it was. And I can't believe now it's been seven years ago. We went into it thinking we didn't have a stop date. We were like, Oh, we'll do it for six months. We'll do it for a year. We kind of went all in, sold everything. We're like, we're just going to do this. But I don't know if I would say that we thought we'd still be doing it seven years later, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> you like it that much. Now, how old is your oldest kid? He is 13 now. So we have a 13-year-old, 11-year-old twins, and then an 8-year-old. So they were 6, 4, 4, and 2 when we started. Okay, that's what I was wondering. So you had all four kids when you guys started the full-time RVing. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. That, that is. Now, now for the, the first RV, I mean, I know you guys, you know, you get out there. We've seen some of the <laughs> renovations. They're absolutely gorgeous. When you got into your first RV, was it something that you renovated right away? Were you just kind of... Um, you know, just kind of jumping into it, just being like, nope, this is the floor plan we want and it's good. Or did you kind of custom tailor it to, to what worked for you and your family? We actually had to renovate it because back then there was no RVs that were set up for four kids. So everything we looked at, we could not find a model that would have like four beds for the kids to have. And we, at that time, wanted a class A. We did not want a fifth wheel or travel trailer. So okay. there were no class A's out there that had that set up. So we actually bought a new Mar diesel pusher, a 39 foot one with just a bedroom in the back. And yep. we took out the back closet and the back like TV area. And we had four bunks back there with our bed back there. So we slept back there with two big dogs, four kids and us all back in the one room. <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, we, we do just fine in these negative temperatures, but it was like <laughs> a little hot box back there. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it was. But it worked out. It worked out really well. And we really enjoyed it. Like we co-slept with our kids and everything. So they were always in our bed anyway. So Aww. it worked out really well. But then when we did that, it was kind of like, well, yeah, this is going to be our house. So of course we want to like, paint the walls and we wanted to like, you know, have things in it that just functionally worked better for us. So we knew right out of the gate, it was like, we're doing this. And of course we, you know, go buy this rig at the time. It was like 70, $75,000. And Craig's like, we're going to do what to it? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, we are doing this. We're living in it. We're making it like home. So yeah. So it's always, so some of the renovations were out of necessity and some of them have been just because we want to do it and want to have it feel more like home. That is amazing. So you guys went from a class A, so that was your first vehicle, and now you guys are living in a Keystone High Country, Montana. Why why the change from a class A to a pull trailer? Um, kind of a long story. Yeah, it's kind of an evolution <laughs> from the diesel pusher. We wanted to get smaller. It was a 39 foot and we were towing a car behind us. So like logistically, even getting gas was kind of like it got old. So we wanted to be more flexible in our travel get to some places that allowed smaller rigs like national parks and stuff like that. And we also wanted to go do Mexico, which we felt in a big diesel pusher was probably not the smartest thing with the tighter roads down there and stuff. Mm. So after that, we went to a 23 foot class C. Oh my goodness. Was, uh, yeah, it was crazy. Wow. Like, uh, I don't know how, why we did it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was cool though. Like we were able to fit into a parking spot, like at the grocery store and everything. So it was, it was very flexible and super easy to drive, but um, space-wise, it got a little too tight. Well, it got a little too tight, but then we went from that to a 21-foot trailer. So we didn't go bigger after that. You we guys are killing again, me. But <laughs> we spent a lot of time outside. Like, we, we did. We'd wake up and we'd be out the door. But so we much. took that trailer down to Baja, Mexico with a 12-passenger van, and it was probably our most comfortable setup in the way that for driving it wasn't stressful for getting gas it wasn't stressful like we could get around and go anywhere we took that thing off-roading like 
did a ton of things with it. But with that one, again, from a necessity standpoint, we did do some modifications inside just to make things work for us, like setting cabinets up right or adding drawers or baskets or doing different things like that. Um, but then we did realize that one got a little tight. So then we went to a 30 foot trailer and okay. that was okay. But we kind of made some bad choices on what we got and, and the setup just wasn't quite right. So now we're in this fifth wheel and it feels like a mansion to us. We're like, Whoa! <laughs> I feel like I can breathe for them. I yeah, was getting yes. a little anxiety yeah. as you told me you got smaller and smaller. Yeah. When we start getting down to 21 foot with a family of six oh I, oof. and two dogs and two yeah. dogs. Yeah, family of eight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we like each other. It's okay. We love each other. <laughs> there you go. I love there my kids go. too, but 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 how? What do you think, Ian? I feel like I would need my space. Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, you would. You would find. You would, what would happen is you'd wake up in the morning and you would find me outside, <laughs> sit, <laughs> yeah, so sitting in a chair with the coffee, shaking a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's what we would do. There was a lot of outside living. You're like the whole point was we found when we were in the diesel pusher. We spent so much time like just inside, like just. Yeah hanging out and it's like wait this isn't why we did this so when mm -hmm. we got smaller and smaller it was like in the morning it was like go outside go outside everyone outside so luckily when we were in that 21 foot trailer like we spent eight months and it rained like two days out of that eight months oh, so we were awesome. just outside like that's nice. the whole time and had a good outdoor set but we yes. even went to a full-time family rally and like all of the kids were over by our rig because we had the most toys. And we had people be like, how do you have the most toys and you have the smallest space? Because we just like open our bay and just like Legos and toys would just like fall out of it. We're like, yeah, everyone spends time outside. It's all good. So it was good. <laughs> That's great. And now and now you guys are, are in a fifth wheel. I believe you have a high country, correct? So, yes, so correct. tell me, what, what was it about, about that floor plan, about that brand? Like what kind of drew you guys to that one, especially coming from... You know, it sounds like you guys have, have run kind of the whole gamut here. Um, what was it about that one that just kind of made you guys say, yep, this is, a, this is our next RV? So at this point, we were kind of like, okay, we're done roughing it in these small rigs. Like, we want to have some more of the luxuries and some of the nicer things. So for that reason, we knew we wanted, like, a big residential fridge. We wanted a bedroom, like, area for the kids. We wanted each of the kids to have their own space, so their own bed area. We also knew that we wanted a bedroom for us that was a little bit separated from the kids because now our kids are older and, you know, we felt like that was nice for both sides, like a good thing. And then we also really wanted like a big like living room kitchen area. Yeah. We do tend to just all hang out together in here and then the kids will have friends over and they'll be playing and we just knew we wanted a bigger area here. So and then the other thing that was really important to us is we wanted to make sure that the rig was 36 feet. Ideally, we would have even gone smaller, you know, 34 feet or less, but we didn't want like a big 40 foot fifth wheel. We still wanted to be able to get into a lot of RV parks or national parks and just make it easier for traveling. So that was another reason. And then another thing was that from a cargo capacity standpoint, when you're living in this thing full time, like we know now our stuff easily weighs 3,500 pounds, if not more. Yeah. So we knew from a cargo capacity standpoint that we wanted something that was going to be able to handle all of our stuff. So this one kind of checked all those boxes. It did. Yeah, it absolutely did. And, and we knew that the Montana line was just high quality. Like it, it has a great reputation. So we loved it, you know, from a quality perspective. And the other thing that we were really drawn to when we came in was the light cabinetry and like mm -hmm. the lighter look of it. Um, we felt like that was so different and it really appealed to us. So we, we kind of fell in love with it right off the bat coming into it and it checked all those other boxes too. So Now I saw that in your renovation pictures that you guys renovated everything, but you left the cabinets, which a lot of people don't do that. But you're right. It's because it's those, those lighter cabinets, the more modern look yep. and it looks great. You guys did a great yep. job. Now with that, I know you guys renovated. What are some of the bigger changes you guys made in your trailer? Yeah, luckily we didn't have to do too many big changes in here, which was nice because the cabinets and we've attempted to paint cabinets in the past and it's never gone well. <laughs> so we were really excited <laughs> that these ones were just nice and we didn't have to touch them. So the major things we did is we took out the couch and the dinette right away. Kind of like you get in these rigs and there was like a couch for like two people and we're like, mm -hmm. we're a family of six. So like that's not really going to work. So we knew right away that that was out and we wanted like a futon type of couch. So when the kids have sleepovers and things like that, there's a space, you know, for them to sleep. And then it also meant for the table area, we wanted to take that out and make that smaller just because 
we really don't sit around the table to like eat dinner together or anything. If we're going to do that, we'll go outside on the picnic table or do something like that. So we didn't really need that same table space. Right. So that was a big thing. We kind of redid that whole area. We took the trim off of the slide out. I should rephrase that. I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> right? it took the trim off around the slide out. And he um, replaced that with wood. And actually, when we did post on social media about doing this conversation with you guys, people asked, how do you do that? I want to know how hard that was or how easy that was. And really, it wasn't hard at all. Like, no, not at all. Yeah. yeah. And I've never done it like in an RV before, so I wasn't quite sure how uh, difficult it would be. And I thought they'd used a lot of glue, so I didn't know if things would come apart like messy and like I'd have to really you know clean stuff up but it was no problem like it was very easy to take off and replace and I think it turned out really nice and it was yeah. pretty easy job to do so. yeah the wood feel to it definitely added to it but other than that we put like a desk back in our room so we took those that dresser out and replaced it with two other dressers and put a desk back there and then we just painted and wallpapered and now we've added like you know random baskets and little things like that here and there and in the kids room um did a little bit of the same type of stuff, but really nothing major, just more surface type of things just yeah. because the setup was so good to start with. Now, now I got to ask you guys, you know, when we talk about, talk to some people and they talk about renovations and renovating an RV, how much experience would you say you have to have or how handy do you have to be to do some of these renovations? I mean, I know you guys said, mm -hmm. you know, you replace some furniture, did a little bit of painting. Um, you know, it sounds like replacing the, the slide fascia may have been, you know, a, a little more in depth. Is it something you feel that yeah. most people can kind of take on or should you kind of go into it uh, with a pretty good idea of, of what you're doing? I would say anybody can do it. Like, I, I do think tackling some of those bigger projects maybe you have to have a little experience or at least the tools um to do it uh we were luckily at my parents house and my dad had everything so i was able to knock it all out without having to like borrow stuff or you know anything like that but as far as painting goes i think anyone can really do it it just it's tedious and not super fun but anyone <laughs> could really do that um yeah I, I don't know what do you think like yeah no i agree and i think like removing the couch people are like well can we take our couch out? And it's like, yeah, you can take your couch out. You take a couple of screws apart and it breaks apart fine mm -hmm. and you can get it out. So I think some of that stuff that people are worried, like they just, well, our couch won't go out the door. Well, no, you'll figure it out. Or we've known people that have had to take a window out of their RV to get their couch out. But then they're like, <laughs> oh, it really wasn't even that hard to take the window out. So it wasn't a big deal. Now I know how to take a window yeah. out. <laughs> there yeah. There you go. Okay. <laughs> But so I would say, yes, I think anyone can do at least these things like the painting and the wallpaper and replacing a couch or finding a different dinette. The things you want to be conscious of are the weight. You don't want to be adding a lot of extra weight to your rig. So you yes. do want to think twice about that. You can't just go buy any couch you want. Like you've got to check the weight and know what mm -hmm. that's at. And then for the painting and wallpapering, like our wallpaper sometimes stays up. Sometimes it kind of falls down. So you're going to have to like be doing um, some, you know, repairs on that and whatever. But it's also, if you don't like the wallpaper you put up, you take it down and you put up something different. Or if you paint it and you don't like the color, you just paint a new color on it. So I really think anyone can do it that wants to do it, but it's definitely nerve wracking. It is, but it also is one of those things like you just got to get over it. Like, don't be afraid. If you want to make it look, you have a vision, like just make it happen. And you can figure it out. Yeah, Craig was really nice about this one because he was kind of like throughout the whole thing was like, um, I don't know, I don't know. And then in the <laughs> end, he's like, oh, it really came together well. I'm like, like you got to trust the ladies. Yes. Exactly, exactly. I'm like, you think I didn't know what I was doing? <laughs> like, I was like putting things together. He's like, yeah, I wasn't sure, but I love it. I'm like, five okay, trailer <laughs> later, five trailers later. Yes. I think she might know what yeah. she's yeah. doing. She might know a thing or two. <laughs> <I> just... <laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. I, I have exactly. the same thing with same thing with my wife. Like, you know, she'll start doing some decorating, and I just don't have the vision, right? And you know, I, I'm kind of like Craig when we start talking about renovations, and I'm like. Ooh, I don't know. That that sounds a little pricey. We sure we want to do that? And then after it's all said and done, it all comes together. I'm like, well, that's beautiful. <laughs> you guys don't have to worry about anything. Exactly. No, I have a question no. for you guys. Did you guys have? Did your kids have any say in the renovation, or was it the parents' choice, or how did you guys go about that? Yeah, we always try, even from our first rig when the kids were really little, like we wanted them involved in it. So we asked them like what color they wanted their bunk bed area painted. Okay. So we always give them at least the area that they're going to be sleeping in awesome. that they can design that like how they want. So they can pick their curtains, they pick their wall color, they pick That's like cool. their bedding and, you know, all of that. And then in the back room here, it's actually like a gaming setup. So we did the whole theme was like gaming and like, you know, 
playing, I don't know, all different yeah. remotes and things like that. So, um, so yeah, they're definitely always involved in that. When it came to like the living room setup and the kitchen and that, I kind of just took that and was like, nope, we're putting the cheetah print in because I want it. <laughs> but <laughs> in your bedroom, we can do what you want. So that's how we always do it. But the them. kitchen area, that's mom's area. She gets to do what she wants. <laughs> yes. And the kitchen exactly. area and the living area are pretty much together. So basically yes. she gets a say in all of it. Correct. Uh, Correct. Yep. I agree. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I love that the kids, you know, that they got to say in their space, you know, we talk about, yep. you know, like you say, full-time living, living on the road, it makes it feel, it makes it feel like home, you know, it is home and they get, they get yep. their say in their space and it just feels nice and comfortable. And I absolutely love that. Um, quick question for you guys, you know, just kind of talking a little bit further and we we're talking about some of the renovations. Mm -hmm. Um, how about budget wise? I mean, do you guys go in with a budget? Do you, and do you have, you know, cause you've renovated five RVs now. Have you blown the budget out of the water? Have you come pretty close? Like how, how's the budgeting concerns with the renovations? Wait, what, what's a budget? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. Sir. Perfect. <laughs> yes. Uh, we are not, we are not budgeters. We are, let's do what we want and then we'll figure out how to make the money and pay for it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so no, we have never, um, set a budget for it. I mean, that being said, like we also weren't going to go buy like a thousand dollar couch. Like we just weren't going to do that. Like that's mm -hmm. just not what we do anyways. Um, we've always kind of been the ones to have like a Kia furniture, you know, and stuff like that. So from that reason, I think just the way we've always been, we were never going to spend like a ton of money on it, but we also didn't set a budget because we wanted to do it right. And we wanted to get the things that we wanted. There's been times in the past where I'm like, oh, I really would like that, but it's too expensive. And then after the fact, I buy it anyways, because the cheaper thing I got just didn't work out. So we definitely tried to make choices around like good quality things mm -hmm. that weren't heavy <laughs> and had the like look and feel that we wanted. It's like I bought like an ottoman for like in the living room area that was like $200. And that was like not normal for us to like do. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I'm getting this. I want it. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So. Well, you think in a normal home, you have so much more you have to buy. So to spend a little bit more money on lesser things... For, you know, a smaller space like a trailer. Yeah. Totally worth it. Yeah. A thousand percent. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is when we took out the couches that came in the RV, I actually sold them on Facebook Marketplace. So oh. we did make a little bit of money on the furniture that we were getting rid of. So nice. it kind of helped. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. a trade-off, but it helped. Where there's a will, there's a way. There, there you go. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's so awesome. We kind of found the same thing when we renovated ours. So thank you for sharing this knowledge. It's I think a lot of people, when they first get into RVing, like you saying, like said, they get a little nervous. They don't think they can do it, mm -hmm. but it's a lot easier than you think. And there's experts just like you guys that can help share that information. So this has been awesome. I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. That's fantastic. <laughs> when, when you guys are doing your renovations, um, you know, it, looking back, right, is there anything that you, you would have changed or a different way to maybe do some of the renovations if, if you could have done it differently, I guess, is there something you would have done? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think the only thing, I mean, again, like we said, we've been through this quite a few times. So we kind of knew this time, like what to do and what not to do. But the one thing that we did is like, I wasn't too smart about like the wallpaper I picked for like behind the stove. Cause it like all melted and it was like, Oh, <laughs> that probably wasn't the right choice of wallpaper for back there. Um, so there's some things like that, that I think we would have done differently. But other than that, like, I don't think so. No, not really. But I, I also think like as we live in this, like we see other opportunities that we can either redo that we didn't think quite through enough when we first started. Um, so there's a couple of those things like little storage ideas or, you know, better way to organize things. And, and we're always improving and changing things anyway. So, yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So we set a timeline for ourselves to get everything done within three weeks because we like wanted okay. to get back on the road and be out there and be exploring. We did not want to spend a lot of time on it. Okay. So I do like the idea that we mm. set that tight timeline and we got done what we could get done in that timeline. And then from then on, we've done little things here and there as we've been back on the road. But the major things like the trim slide out and like getting the couches and things like that, like we tried to do all of that right up front, get all the major things done mm -hmm. and then just be able to add those little things as we're going in. As you're learning this space, every time you get yep. into an RV, you have to figure out what's working. Like, okay, wait, that cabinet would be really a lot better if it was organized with different shelves or set up this way or that way. So we knew all of that kind of would come as we were in it. But 
And I would say we did buy a couch that broke in like the first like month oh, that we no. had it. Oh, no. So, but believe it or not, they like to wrestle, you know, and the couch was like the loser in that match. So, <laughs> so some of that type of stuff. But I feel like that no matter how much you try, that stuff may just happen. So overall, I would say we were pretty happy with everything we did. And I don't think there's a lot that we would change or do different. I love that. It sounds like it's been a smooth process. It seems like you guys have got it down. Have there have there been any big hiccups? Yeah, I want to hear. I want to hear these things. Let's, let's, hear, let's hear the horror stories. <laughs> what, what what went wrong? Uh, let's see. Um, not a lot. That's luckily. good. Like, besides the backsplash. Yeah. So one of the. Yeah. Besides yeah, the, which yeah. it's still up and still melting on the wall. So it's I'll fine. Get to it I'm sure point. it looks great. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice texture. Uh, <laughs> so we have to be careful. Like when we bring the slide outs in and out, we have to like be conscious of it because the trim that I put around the slide out is a little bit bigger. Oh, so okay. one time it actually got caught on the ladder we left out a little bit. It oh. pulled the board right off the wall so I had to put that back on you know, with <laughs> duct tape and whatever. <laughs> but little things like that you just kind of got to pay attention to. Yeah, well, and when we started too, the trim we got, we thought we wanted pine. No, we wanted cedar. Okay. We wanted, we wanted cedar. Like that yep. kind of rustic you know, look to it. So we went and bought all the wood and we're all ready to go with it and brought it back and he stained one of it. And we looked at it. We're like, no, yeah, no, okay. that's not what we were thinking. <laughs> so we had to return all that wood and buy the new wood and like, you know, do all of that. But like, yeah, nothing, nothing major. Well, the major stuff happened in our other rig when we tried to paint the cabinets and that just did not work. And that was a huge mess to try to do it. So again, we knew this time, just don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm going on that note then, because a lot of people, like you said, you had, you got all of that wood and then you had to return it all. If you could get advice for some first timers, what would you tell them? I would tell them to buy one piece and maybe buy three different kinds of wood that you like and maybe a couple different color stains and really kind of mess around with it and, and test some different things out and see what you like. And my patience level does not allow for that. So I'm like, <laughs> buy that, get that, let's go, let's do it. But looking back, I think it would have been very smart to do that. Same thing for like when you're doing paint, maybe buy a few different paints yeah. and try them out on the wall in the little section. Again, I'm just not patient enough to do that, but I think that is a good thing to do, especially yeah. for the wood when you have to like cut it and hang it and do all of that. Like it would make a lot of sense to get some different ones and test it out and see what's going to work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I sure? recommend getting like the highest quality paint you can. Um, it's definitely worth the money. We didn't do like any mm -hmm. kind of prep work on our surfaces. I kind of just wiped it down a little bit and just went for it. And it was like a paint primer combo thing. Okay. And uh, it, it went on great. So it was yeah. worth the money. Okay. And what did you have to do? Three coats? Well, I did three coats. We did a, a dark green in our living room kitchen area, and that took three coats just because it was like a darker, darker color, color. So there was sure. a lot of kind of see through. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, yeah. it was good. Yeah, it was worth so, spending the money on the higher quality right. paint to yes. have it work the way it did. thousand percent. So. I can't tell you how many times I have re repainted our Class A, our first one. We don't <laughs> have it anymore. <laughs> I had to memorize the paint color and the, the code number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I keep those little swatches in our, like, in our warranty booklet, you know, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a thousand percent. Now, it sounds like a, a lot of the uh, renovations you guys made have been, you know, aesthetically. But have you done anything? I mean, you know, we talk about having a little bit smaller RV, like, the, you know, the 21 foot travel trailer, you know, 23 foot. What kind of, uh, I guess, renovations did you guys do that are kind of unique to, to make this space work? Yeah, and that one especially we did, like we added a little like um, cabinet or whatever, a little counter space underneath the one thing. So then we could like pop that up and put that up there. Mm -hmm. So to kind of make the cabinet space a little bit bigger. And then normally it was a lot of it was just adding in like little baskets that we would like put on the wall in a certain spot or like tuck little things back in certain areas. But we, the whole like having to like take out like full counters and replace them and do all of that. Like we've just never done it to that level because we always felt like what we had was working and mm -hmm. we just knew that to do that was going to take a lot of time. And mm -hmm. we did not want to give up travel time or family time to do that. So that's, so we keep it just those easy, simple things that'll take maybe a day to do or to knock out. Yeah. But we are in this rig now talking about taking the bathroom out in the back and remodeling that whole area. So it's more okay. of a kid's like play area for their computers and everything. So that'll be a, a pretty major. Wow. Yeah, that's going to involve some 
indoor plumbing adjustments. So it should be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So it's like they've added extra storage, but like mm-hmm. fashionably or kind of discreetly. I feel like that's what's, right. well, that's what's going on right here, and I love it because yeah. you can never have enough storage in yeah, a trailer. Exactly. Right? Right. exactly. Right. I feel like that's something yeah, we're always searching exactly. for. Well, yeah, Brianna yeah, that's Craig. We got oh. like the ottoman that you can put things in, and we got instead of a bench for the dinette area, we got little small ottomans that open up so you can store things in them. So we definitely tried to find a lot of those areas. Like under our couch is like filled with little trays that we can pull out and put stuff in. So Perfect. lots of, and this thing, like we got this little wood, uh, table thing made that we just had to have made on Etsy and to fit the size like perfectly. But it's finding all those little nooks and crannies where you can add things like that. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you guys so much for just kind of walking us through and telling us what it's like to be out there for six years. It sounds like you guys have definitely uh, had your hand in renovating quite a few RVs Mm -hmm. and a lot of success. And uh, one of the greatest parts about doing this is you guys get to pick out an RV that we get to walk through. And coming up next, we have a Montana high country, similar to yours, a little bit different layout. We'll check it out when we come back. Sooner or later, everyone's bound to encounter someone in need. A fellow traveler who could use a helping hand The question always is whether you stop to help or just move on. Thanks for stopping. Thanks, guys. If you're one of the stopping kind, chances are it was passed down. Some good that you observed from early on. Hey, Mom. It's a way of thinking that our world goes beyond where our driveway ends that we're all a part of this community, a good community. It's having your daily plans, yes, but with an eye open, an ear to the ground. More importantly, a willingness to change those plans when someone needs your help. going the extra mile or paying it forward. We just call it being good. Spend a lifetime doing good because the next generation is watching. Welcome back, guys. I am here with Bryce, and uh, we are joined by Crazy Family Adventure, Brianna and Craig. Welcome back, guys. And uh, I'm excited to go through this unit. This one, you know, at first, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting pick. But the more I went through it, I'm like, you know what? I can 100 per- 100% see how this could definitely work for you. And uh, I'm excited. Why don't you guys tell me a little bit about, about why you went with the Montana High Country 377 FL? Yeah, we really like this front lift area in here. We could just see how much fun that would be for our family to have our kids all in there together with their friends over. TV, fireplace, the whole deal. It's like really would feel like you're in like a house, not in an RV. So we really liked that setup a lot. I also like in the kitchen how you almost have two tables. So you have the one where you can kind of pull up to a little bar area and then the other side one with the booth. But again, with six of us, that means maybe everyone can sit down at the same time to eat. <laughs> so that would be really nice. And then um, the back loft area is really interesting how they gave you so much living space in the RV, which we love. And then the sleeping space that they kind of stack that in the back in one room. Like that's really smart and good way to not take too much space up for a sleeping area that you don't spend that much time in anyways, or you're just sleeping while you're there. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Now, with this front living area, I remember you guys were saying that, you know, that's one of your favorite parts, right? It's just sitting around like a family and, and being together. And that's one of the great parts about having that front living room feel, right? Is that, that you have that and you still have a lot of sleeping capacity up there too with those, the trifold sofas. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Perfect room for a sleepover. I know our kids would love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so unique to fifth wheels, too, like that big area and still have a bunk space in the back. I don't mm -hmm. think I've really seen that in many other models. Yeah, you got the fireplace there, beautiful entertainment center. Yeah. I love how that, that one, the TV goes down as well, right, to bring in that window. It really does have the yes. living room feel. Yes. It's just you forget you're in an RV when you live in this section yeah. right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a and great we point. Have one of those, we have one of those windows in our rig right now, and we love that window. Yeah. It's such a big open window, and you can have some amazing views outside of that. So we really like how this one, you have that, and then <laughs> there you go. You have that, and then you also have the TV right there. So how they've used this space in, like, multiple ways is really cool about this rig. Yeah, and the, the fireplace, at first, when we, we have one in our Montana, and at first we were kind of like, I don't know how much we're going to use it, but it is really, really nice. Like, it, it blows off some really nice heat, and it gives us a little nice ambiance, too, so. Totally. We fall in love with that, for sure. Lots of coffees in the morning while we sit next to the fireplace and warm our feet up while love we drink it. our coffee. So. On her fancy ottoman. Yes, on the fancy, the fancy ottoman. But yeah, no, we <laughs> love this ottoman. setup. And of course, from a renovation perspective, I love looking at it and going, oh, you could add some really fun, funky wallpaper in those little coves where the couches are. You could add some really cool colors to the wall to make it pop. And again, take that trim off and add some wood in there and those balances for some cool curtains. There's just lots of room to do some really cool and fun things in there. Yeah, and I'm just seeing a lot of windows too, which is really, really cool. Like, yeah, a lot of natural light there. Yeah, yeah I've wondered it. Light is great. So, Go ahead, sorry. No, I was just gonna say the natural light is great and just being able to see the cool campsites you get to or some of the boondocking spots. Like we love having a lot of windows. And then you can open them with a nice crosswind in there. So you get a nice breeze coming through on the days when it is hot or nice, you know, spring breeze coming through that's great yeah we've uh nilly my wife and i have talked about if we had a space like this we love how the couches face each other you can house so many people there we've wondered if we might even take out one of the couches to have a little like activity table learning center as well or something or a piano right. even oh Tot oh that would be awesome that would be cool. i think you could do a lot of a lot of stuff with that because you have so much couches and seating area it gives you the flexibility to actually, yeah, totally remove one and do a craft area too. I like the piano though. I like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. A light one, of course. Not one of those. Uh, <laughs> Not a grand piano. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a grand, maybe. <laughs> there yeah. you go. There you go. <laughs> one, of the, one of the other things I really like about this too is actually up on the ceiling, uh, kind of the unsung hero, and that's the AC system. This one actually has the, the Whisper Quiet AC up there, which a, a lot of people just don't realize you know, if, if you haven't been RVing, especially with a front living room like this yeah. where you're up higher and close to the ceiling, if you turn that AC on, it's pretty darn loud normally. So if you can do something to reduce that, you know, so it just makes it easier to have that conversation, be able to watch TV. Um, you know, it's a huge noise reduction and being, being straight from the factory with it's a big one. Like yeah, we love that about the Keystone and the Montana High Countries, how we've noticed throughout our rig too that there's just those little things like that that they know and they get and they make it, work that way yeah. like they don't ignore that stuff they, oh people will be fine with the noise like they're like no we need to make yeah. this better and we love that they do that mm -hmm. do you guys use the do you have a ceiling fan in your rig is right do you yeah, use that do. a lot we do yes we do actually like it's it's a great way just to circulate air um we usually have windows open a lot but yeah we, we flip it on and just kind of leave it running so yeah, another it's nice to have. It's option. another one thing yeah. that makes it more like a house than it does like an RV. Like, who has a ceiling fan in their RV? Like, it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. And you're talking about the yeah, kind of the second cool, like, table here? Oh, go yeah, ahead, Greg. yeah, I love it. So when we were in our house, we had like a nice little space like this where the kids would pull up their bench or their little chairs and sit there while I was making breakfast or whatever. And I really miss that like that we don't have that so seeing that in this model i'm like oh that's so cool the kids just just pull up right there a little breakfast nook area like that and yep. sit there while i'm cooking or craig's cooking yep. and just a a cool hangout spot so i really like that added area there and then still having the booth where then you kind of have people sitting there too so it just gives lots of spaces for lots of people which when you have yep. four kids is good yeah <laughs> no, and i love that big counter space too because that's the one thing I do a lot of cooking and, and like prep area for cooking and stuff like that is just so limited in RVs. But that big, huge peninsula over on the left there 
it's amazing for that. Look at yes. that. Yeah, that's awesome. And those drawers are actually good size drawers too, not ones that are just there to have a drawer. Those right. are good wit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we've been, again, very happy with our Keystone Montana High Country, too, that yeah. all the drawers are actual drawers. <laughs> They're not just <laughs> right. there for decoration, because yeah. we've, we've seen those in some rigs, yes. and that they are good, decent sizes, so we, we do really appreciate that. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things that's funny, you know, as you go through RVs, you look at drawers that are actually functional, and with Montana, with the exception of that windshield, every window opens, too, uh, which, you know, for you yeah. guys, when you talk about not running the AC and opening up windows, like, that's, that's going to be a pretty big factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Space. That's huge. Yeah, so and look at that stories. area too. There's so many yeah. things we can just like put the kids' toys in there, put in there like our games and everything. Like so many extra cabinet spaces. And we did like about this model as well is that the cargo capacity is over three thousand pounds. And yep. like we've talked about before, we've gone into rigs where like the cabinet space. We're like, look at all this cabinet space, and then the cargo capacity is like fifteen hundred pounds. Yeah. We're like. Well, you have all this cabinet space, we can't even use it. Where in this one, because you do have over 3,000 pounds, you can actually use all that cabinet space. Yeah. Oh, and of course, the fridge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> residential <laughs> fridge there. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually glad that you brought up the, the cargo carrying capacity because that's one of those things a lot of people just, they, they don't consider, right? Especially first-time buyers. Um, you know, they, they look at, okay, can I tow this? And then, you know, they're looking at, at all the, you know, the stats yeah. on the truck and the stats on the camper, making sure that they are able to tow it down the road, but they don't necessarily right. consider, hey, is this going to have enough carrying capacity for everything that I need to put in it? Yes. yes, and we have been in situations where we have bought rigs without really thinking about that, and it yep. does not go well. Yeah. It's not a good thing, especially if you're full-time traveling. If you are looking to just take it out on the weekends, you'll probably be okay. But if you're looking to take it in any extended trip and to really pack it full, like you want to really pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah. and that's just something that comes with experience because you don't really know how much your stuff weighs until you have everything in it, and then yep. you weigh the whole rig itself. So. Yep. We know over the years, like, whatever we think we need in cargo capacity. Uh, we need more. <laughs> maybe double it. <laughs> so we always recommend for full-time families going on the road that it be at least over 3,000 pounds. If you can get over 4,000, that's even better. But And you may think, there's no way that we have that much stuff. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and then you forget how much you have, too. Like, when you guys recently moved into this new unit, was it a surprise how much stuff you had? Oh, yeah. Or... Because over time, you kind of Every forget. time. <laughs> yeah. It took us all day to move an RV. I'm like, how much stuff do we have? To <laughs> we're all like, how do we fit all this in this 30-foot trailer? Like, where, where did this even go? So, yes, absolutely. There's yeah. always more than you think. I felt bad for the trailer when we left it. I was like, oh, man, sorry. I didn't realize we, uh, <laughs> we didn't have much in there. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I love the, the yeah, sink but, in the Montana, too. Um, that's one of the things that have always stood out to me. They actually, a few years back, went away from it for a little bit and brought it back because so many people love the design. I mean, that, the, the bowl on the left itself is bigger than, you know, some of the sinks you get in other RVs, yeah. but it still gives you the split mm -hmm. bowl so you can fit some of your bigger pots and pans down in there and still be able to easily wash and rinse dishes, and I love that. Yeah, totally. And we found a perfect little drawing rack at Camping World that fits right in the right side of the sink nice so it worked out really good yeah i know which one you're talking about yeah, actually we recently picked up one of those <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah it makes a difference saves up the counter space it does it's, it yeah. does and it's not easy to find those ones that are that smaller size so we were so excited when we found the one that worked we're like yes camping world you got it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i love it yeah you can see that that you talked about that beautiful you know lighter cabinetry they have in mm -hmm. here i mean i yeah. I agree with you. You can just keep it as it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And it really lightens everything up and just gives it, and it gives it a much more like a homey feel just as is. But what it also means is that you can have a lot of fun with the wallpaper or painting the walls because the color goes with so many things. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like you're trying to mark, like match a dark wood to something specific. So in this case, you can really have at it. You can put cheetah print all over the place in there with that. So. <laughs> and you should. And you should. <laughs> yeah, I love this loft area, especially like if you have littles or, or how big your old your kids are, the easy stairs to go up. Yes. And surprisingly more roomy yep. than you think up top here. Yeah, it looks like in that area you could actually the kids could probably sit up there, right? It looks like it's pretty high. Yeah. 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 I think I think you could probably yeah. sit up for sure. And 
to Bryce's point, you know, that's, I, I, I love that you brought up the steps because um, that's a big one for two reasons, right? A lot of times when you have loft, it's, you know, the steps are like straight up and down. And, you know, it's, yeah. it, it doesn't feel very safe to have yeah. the kiddos climb up and down there. And here, you know, if you have dogs, the dogs can get up into that loft. It's a nice, mm -hmm. easy area yeah. for them to get up. Um, you know, I, it's, it's just one of those totally. things you don't normally think about, but I do love the steps. Yeah. yeah, it's funny that you say that. Just this morning, my daughter slipped down her ladder from her loft oh, and no. herself. So, yeah, it's funny that you brought And she's 11, so it's not even like, you know, it's just one of those things. And every time I go up there, I'm kind of like, oh, geez, if I fall for this <laughs> thing, that's not going to be pretty. So, <laughs> <laughs> so having the stairs there, that is huge. That's really nice that they have that. Yeah. Yeah. Big bathroom, too. And I, I, I love the, you know, a couple of things I really like about Montana when they do in the bathroom. Um, you know, you're looking at a, a porcelain bowl, of course. Uh, so that way, yep. you know, and I always tell people, and, and I'm sure you guys, you know, you guys living in it can probably attest. There's a big difference in the longevity between a plastic and a porcelain yeah. bowl. Yeah. Uh, so much easier to clean, too. It's just, yes. Yeah. So good. Yep. And the one-piece shower, you know, it's it, it, home, you know, yep. it's, it's like home, uh, you know, residential construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. No, they do a good job with this setup. And you even saw like behind the toilet, how they have the little hooks where you can hang stuff, like all those extra little things that Keystone will add in there. I think it just makes it, it's those extra touches that make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on our unit, we have a 10 gallon water heater, so we can take a really decent long hot shower, which is cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's really nice. Especially with the kiddos. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And especially when they this shower. time of year. <laughs> yeah. 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 So this time of year for sure. It's like, I missed my bathtub back yeah. home, but I'll take a nice hot shower. Yeah. <laughs> now this room, it, it steps down, right? When he walked in. Yeah. A yep. Bit. Yeah. Because it's of a that sunken loft bedroom. Above. Yeah. Yep. yep. That okay. seems like so little, but that makes a huge difference. I'm very aware oh, of stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that really does. And then right there where you can see that cabinet that's open, uh, it's something else I like about it is that this unit does have washer-dryer prep in there as well. Um, oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's one of those things, right? It's always hit or miss. How about, I mean, what have your guys' experience been with that? Do you usually go to a laundromat? Have you gotten units that have always had washer-dryer? What, what have you done on the road? Yeah, no, for us, our first one did, and then we have not had a washer dryer until this one. And I feel like it's one of those things. If you don't have it, you don't know what you're missing. And then once you get it, you're like, oh, okay, I don't ever <laughs> want to be with one without it. <laughs> so I think that it is a really nice thing to have, and we can just run laundry every day and keep up with it. They're smaller, but even with, like, the six people, like, if I just run a load once, a day, maybe even every two days, like we're totally fine and can keep up with everything. So yeah. I think they're definitely worth it to have it, especially if you're going to be places with full hookups. If you're planning a boondock a lot, that gets a little bit more tricky. Sure. But if you plan on definitely being a place or like we'll even like go boondock somewhere and then specifically stay at an RV park for one night just to do laundry and to get everything done before we head out to the next boondocking spot. So it is nice. And especially now with everything going on that mm -hmm. we don't have to go to a laundromat. Yes. It's really like we do really like that. That is a really good point because we, in our first unit, we didn't have a washer and dryer. We have hookups now, but we've been just on the go with this uh, tour, and so we haven't got units yet, and we've wondered about that. We're just like, well, we'll be at an RV park anyway. We could use this, but that feature of not having to go in and just do it all within your unit, yeah. that's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. Yep, totally. It is. And just having the dryer is nice, too. Like, if the kids, their clothes get wet outside playing in the rain, and you just want to yeah. dry everything really quick for the towels from the beach. Like, it's nice just to have that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one of the things I like about this setup, too, is it's pretty uncommon for fifth wheels, is that the washer-dryer hookup isn't in the wardrobe. So you still get that sure. full wardrobe space. So, you know, if you're, especially if you're full-time yeah. living, I mean, you know, you're going to have a lot of clothes in there. And you, if your washer-dryer's yeah. in there, it's taken out quite a bit. But here, it's not an issue. That is huge. That is a huge closet. That is really nice to have something that size back there. And the nice doors that close with the mirrors on it, right? So you get, yeah. yes. sometimes it's hard to find a full length mirror in an RV. So True. that's awesome that you have that right there. You know, it's, it's funny how many times I have heard that, um, you know, especially people that have, have been, you know, living in an RV. They're like that you just, you can't get a full length mirror, you know, like you get torso up, but it's hard to make sure, you know, everything's matching and looking good. And it's funny you bring that up. Yeah. Yeah, see those little things you catch after you've been in a lot of RVs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's the angle of the camera, but this bed seems like it raises higher than, well, at least our first rig. That's good storage underneath. Yeah, yeah, big storage yeah. for some bigger items. Yep. 
That's yep, nice. That is really nice to have. We have ours under our bed is filled with like winter clothes and suitcase things and stuff like that. That's a great extra storage. And if they don't have a lot of other stuff underneath there, so you do True. have a big storage you can area. You actually That's use great. it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is similar to like the um, the what we had for the dresser in our rig. And what we actually ended up doing here for those that are planning on working in it is we actually took this dresser out and replaced it with two from Amazon that are smaller and then just put okay. like a wood slab across the top. So then I can sit in the middle of it, like my legs can fit in the middle of it to turn it into a desk, but still have the dresser space. I like so that. Yeah, that's nice. cool. Yeah, and it has the same setup here. So you have the window there, so I get nice like light, and I can open the window and everything, and it works out really well there to kind of turn that into a little office area, desk area. That's really smart. They should take note of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Put a desk in the in the master bedrooms. We always uh, tell people that put a desk back there in those rooms. <laughs> yep. Now, what do you guys think of the the door on the on the uh, off door side there? Having that second entrance. Sorry, Kevin, not, not to make you flip around here. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of having a door uh, over here? Right, it's not something that we commonly see in an RV. Um, do you feel that, that you would yeah. use it? Do you feel that it's kind of a waste? What 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 are your feelings on it? Um, we actually have two doors in the rig we're in right now, too, and we would prefer not to have two doors. Okay. So um, I don't know about this. I mean, having one go out one side and one go out the other side, like, that's interesting. But usually, if it goes out one way, you're going into your neighbor's yard. So I don't know if two doors are needed. Uh, maybe for safety reasons, like fire escape reasons or something like that, since all the sleeping area is in the back there. Um the other thing that I know for ours, one of the reasons they have the two doors is if slide outs are closed, you can't access certain mm. areas. So yes. they have another entrance so you can. Yep. Um, so that's, yeah, I, I don't know if we'd use it, but. Yeah, for those reasons, though, like if you are parked at a Walmart for the night and you don't want to put your slide outs out, you can at least get back to the rooms then, which is probably why they put that second door and end the fire safety stuff. So yeah. One of those features you don't know. That. Yeah, you don't know you need until you're doing that. And you're like, oh, this is nice. that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. When you're parked somewhere, you forget why you need it. But in those times, you do. It's like that. Yeah. <laughs> now, I just saw that Kevin was looking at the central vac there. Do you guys find that you use your central vac quite a bit? No, we, we actually took it out, and the reason okay. we did is we 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 use all of the, the under our stairs as shoe storage. Ah. So we took out the those little grates next to it. It's like a little wood kind of uh, decorative yeah. thing there. Yeah, we took the screws out on that, and back there is just open. So we use shoes to, you know, we put our shoes in there, and then I slapped like a little thing of Velcro on the back so it still sticks in place so you can kind of close it all in. Um, I, I but, like yeah, we that. did take out the we did take out the the vacuum system and we just kind of used like a little stick vacuum that we got at Costco. Yeah, the hose was really big and it kind of seemed kind of cumbersome to get it out and to use it. So we were just like, nope, we need more space for the shoes. We got a lot of shoes. So. <laughs> well, and, and it's it's important, right? I, I talk about it quite a bit too. That you know, you, you come in, you just don't have a spot to put shoes, and you don't want to just you know kind of have them all over the door area. I mean, then it's in the way and cumbersome so i, I completely right. understand yeah which if you're just doing like exactly. week trips or whatever it's not as big a deal but living in it full time that definitely adds up now sure. now yeah, coming totally. oh, go ahead. sorry no we're good um coming from like a, a travel trailer you know going back into a fifth wheel especially uh, high country uh you start to move into auto level now have you found that you really enjoy that is it saved a lot of time for you so there's a learning curve to it for sure. <laughs> like at first we had problems with it and I think it was just user error. We were just idiots. We didn't read the manual or anything. Although we called it the leveling lotto. We yeah. were like, is it going to level? You push the button and you watch. You're like, come on, make the ding, make Go the on, ding. <laughs> yeah. But we figured out that even though it's an auto leveling system, you still have to be semi-level when you start it. So that was kind of a learning curve. And then also just the amount that you manually adjust the, the, the landing gear and stuff like that um, kind of all factors into your auto level success. So yes. we, I think we figured it out now. But um, and so now it's great. But yeah, at but first there was a learning curve. There's definitely a learning curve. So it is something that you are going to want to mess around with and play around with and, and figure out. We look like newbies like the first time we did it. We're like, no, we've been doing this for six years. I swear. Like, <laughs> yeah, I remember kinda, the like, first time. The truck up. Sorry, go ahead. I had to hook the truck up a couple times. I had to hook the truck up a couple times just to like get it back up so we can adjust the legs. I'm like, 
Okay. Maybe we should just quit. No. <laughs> the first time I pushed auto level on ours, it just started going down. I was like, no, 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 no. What's, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. It's a freak out moment. Yeah. Well, it, it yeah, is yeah, a little well, scary. Well, well, people don't think about it. You know, if you're on uneven ground, I mean, it's going to level it out no matter what. So it's going to, I mean, it'll raise tires right up off the ground if you're on unlevel ground. It's, yeah. That has happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, or it just stops working and it yeah. tells you error, and then you're yes. not level, and then you have to hook the truck back up and reposition it and change everything. And like, <laughs> yeah, now we've got it figured out and it's all good, but it did take some time. <laughs> That's Very nice funny. once you have it figured out. Yes, exactly. Yeah, one, one of the other things I really enjoy about Montana too, you know, we talk about, um, you know, you guys having all the toys and kind of being, you know, the, the center at the park. Um, but with Montana, they use that drop frame construction, and so it just gives you a much larger uh, outside garage area than, than a lot of the other manufacturers. Yes. Yeah, we've really appreciated having that. We actually have a more ride cargo tray that we added into ours too. Very nice. So one half of ours, it'll pull out with the tray, which is really nice. And yeah, we definitely use all that space and have plenty of room to put multiple bins in there and really get a lot of stuff in there. So we're really, and in the front, we have our solar that we got from Future Solutions and that takes up part of that area in the front there, but we still have the whole other area to use for Craig to put his tools and different supplies and things like that. They did a really good job with the outside storage for a fifth wheel that yeah. sometimes it's not that yeah, much yeah. room. <laughs> That's a good point. Now, when you talk Ooh, about this one has that extra one, love that ours does not have that. And we wish it did. So that's nice that it has an extra area like that. That's great. Yeah. A little bit in the back here too. So some just storage oh, all no, over nice. this thing. That's a lot of storage. Yes. Yeah. That is great. That is really nice that yeah, they added that extra in. Extra. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, when you guys talk about solar, what, uh, how much solar did you guys end up going with? Um, so we have 1,200 watts uh, on the roof. So we okay. have four 300-watt panels. Um, we have two uh, Battleborn GC3 batteries, which are 255 amp hours each, so a total of 510 amp hours of lithium. So yep. that's been amazing. Yeah. And um, this one, these ones come prepped for the solar yeah. and there's like a legit prep. Like they have wires yes. run to the roof for the solar panels. And like we've had other ones that said it was solar prepped and they really weren't. Yeah. This one really is. So that is definitely a highlight of these high countries. If you're looking to go solar, they've done a good amount of a work for you to yeah. start with. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like it's a DIY project for sure with what they've done to it. So I, I love that. Love it. Well, Brianna, Craig, thank you so much for joining us, guys. It's been an absolute blast. This is a beautiful unit. Again, the Keystone Montana High Country 377FL. Thank you again for all of your stories. For everyone watching, stay tuned. We have more coming for week eight of the Ultimate RV Show National Tour. Demand for RVs is at historic levels, which is why we are working around the clock to bring you over 80,000 factory fresh RVs. That's the largest selection of RVs in the world. Fresh from the factory to our stores, to your driveway or campsite. RVs are made by Americans for Americans. And now you can see America for less. Shop over 80,000 factory fresh RVs starting at just $5 a day. Click, call, or visit your local Camping World or Gander RV and Outdoors today. We are excited. I can't believe it happened that fast. A lot of changes, a lot of retail. We got customer picks. We've got influence. And we've been having a blast. Sean Parr, I got the flipping Tilbys. I got the Jurgies. Guys, it's flying by when we come to another location. We just get here just 20 minutes ago. Day two, already done. Just and like already that. done. And tomorrow is another big day. And uh, what are we looking forward to tomorrow? Or what was the best thing about today, by the way? I, once again, just seeing all the all the little trailers, all the fun fun different layouts. I, I really have just I I'm I'm geeking out on all the new all the new everything. Yeah, over eighty thousand factory fresh RVs off the. These are twenty twenty ones we're talking about. You heard Ian, you heard Chris talking about these incredible vehicles. The Jergies are. I know you guys love the uh, the fifth wheels too. That we're excited about. We keep seeing them going in and out from the uh, dealership here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I love that. And I love even talking about the renovations that Crazy Family Adventure did as well. We have some ideas of things to change in ours that make it more like a home. So, so many good gems you'll get from just being here on the stream with us. Yeah, and one of the things I really enjoyed about today was Ian talking about those incredible must-have 
when you're uh, talking about generators, because right now, especially as we've seen across the country, generators, generators, generators are a really good thing to have. Can Absolutely. I do a little poem that I, I wrote just a moment ago? I would ago? love to hear love it. Love to hear while, it. While I was babysitting. My well, child. <laughs> it's week eight, day three. Make sure that you see that when we get together tomorrow, that's all y'all and me and us. Others, <laughs> make sure you register easy as one, two, three, because tomorrow somebody wins a brand new RV. RV. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. Thanks for the unbelievable day today, you guys. And I can't wait to get right back here tomorrow, yep. 11 a.m. We are going to jump back in and get everything taken care of. So we'll see you all then. Thank you all Bye. so much. Yes.